I first of all, I'm gonna say triple jumpers are the supreme beings of the universe. Ooh. Bottom line. So you, you said you were self-coached the whole time? Yes, yeah, self-coached. Self-coached. Yes. Okay. And uh, very, very, you know in high school. Right. In right. high school, you, you know, there's not very many people. First of all, they they didn't have a triple jump to my senior year in high school. What? Um, so nobody even knew it. Yes, in the state of Wisconsin, there was no dunking to my senior year. What? And then there was no yes, and there was no triple jump. So no way. Most people think I've been jumping my whole life. Dude, it's triple jump. We didn't have it to our senior year. That's so, crazy. So we were but in learning how to do the event. So yeah. you can imagine what kind of coaching was available. So a lot of times I would yeah. have to do a lot of, I created my own drills in my backyard. My parents used to laugh at me out back and I would be making up my bounding drills, plyometric drills, right. all that stuff when I was like 10 years old, 11 years old. My goodness. Get myself ready for long jump, triple jump, basketball, all that jazz. Sheesh. But we didn't, have that, we didn't have that kind of foundational stuff back then. Yeah. So I had to create a lot of that stuff on my own. And in doing that, I learned a lot more. Right. And when I got to college, they didn't know half of the stuff I was doing. So yep. I was like, look, you guys got to move out of the way. I'm trying to get to this level here. Right. And you're coaching me to this level down here. Wow. And I didn't I didn't like that. So I continue to maintain that that tradition throughout. Yeah. And it, and it works. It worked well for me because I was so motivated every morning to get up to try to see how how much better I could be. So. Right, right. So I, I read a book recently called Fake by Robert Kiyosaki. It's about money. But he in right. there, he talks about fake teachers. And like, oh. he's like, I only ever want teachers who have have done what they're talking about. And so I'm like, man, I that. Agree. So I agree. Yeah. I agree. Well, that's, that's, that's exactly that's, that's kind of like my, my, uh, what is it? It's, it's tough to talk to kids and talk to coaches and things like that, because I am such, such a self motivated person. Right. And when I talk about coaches who are yeah. coaching athletes, I have a hard time because it, for me, the better the, the athlete is, the better the coach appears to be. Oh, in my interesting. Opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you get, I mean, if you, if you could take a, an average kid and make them great. Yeah. Wow. You're, you're an amazing coach to me. I can see you have right. some skills and your 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 right your demeanor and your character and your motivational stuff is is on point yeah but if you already have a great athlete and you only get great athletes man how about, what are you doing <laughs> right i mean right. that doesn't that doesn't make sense that's like a guy coming to say well kid i coach i'm gonna coach you kenny i said well i already jumped 59 four okay well what are you gonna teach me how to get to 65 yeah yeah if you can teach me how to get to 65 then you're a great coach otherwise yeah, you're a, a guy who just is sharing my information with right other people and that's where i that's where i stand right. at that that's no that's that's so perfect and i also love that that you said 65 like in your mind i feel like do you feel oh. like you're capable of way more than whatever you're doing right now absolutely nice. absolutely i've always I've, I've always felt that way and I always throw this in the face of all the the new jumpers, the kids, and they're like, "Kenny, you're you're not relevant anymore." I said, "Well, I still have the Olympic record at fifty nine four and a quarter, <laughs> yeah. but that record is into headwinds. Mm -hmm. So until you break a record into a headwind, if you break my Olympic record into a headwind, then you broke my record. But if you break my record and your your wind readings are one point five or point five plus behind your back." If right. you've ever jumped into a headwind, you know the difference between 100%. jumping into a headwind. I don't care if it's 0 0.01 yep. or whatever it is. Yeah, you know what that feels like. So and when I when, when I claim that to people, that's that's my that's my thing of letting them know if I have have the ability to jump that far into a headwind, just imagine if I in the right opportunity or situation and scenario, right. what 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 I'm able or capable of unleashing at those at those times with the little bit of tailwind at the Olympics or a little bit of tailwind in the perfect situation. Who knows? Yes. That's yes. going to be so perfect. No, that's good. All right. So you're probably most known for your performances at like the highest level Olympics, world championships, etc. Right. But nobody starts out there. Nobody starts out right. jumping 59 feet, you know? So right. if, if you wouldn't mind, I mean, I've got time. 
Uh, if you've Yo, got time, I'll right, take I've as got much time. as you got. Here. Perfect. Here, so we're here. Let, let's go back to the beginning, which is crazy. That was just your senior year of high school. Like you didn't start in middle school, right. but let's go back to the beginning. And if you could try to think back and walk through like the key moments or key factors in your career where you, you know, had bigger improvements, you know, cause like right. ideal, ideally as you're training, you have incremental improvements as throughout, throughout, but then there's moments where you hit kind of plateaus and then all of a sudden you jump for, you know, no pun yeah. intended up yeah. to the next level. Right. Like, and so I, I jumped to high school and college and I had a few of those. You, yes. you've had a much longer career than I did. Walk me through. Sorry, I'm done talking. Okay, no worries. No, this is awesome because and you and you feel free to jump in while I'm going through this because I will skip over stuff. Sure. Um, I'll start from the basics uh, from high school. You know, like I said, we didn't have it in our state event, state meet till our senior year, but we were able to compete in it. You know, with within our you know our high schools or like awesome. dual meets and stuff like that from my junior year. Okay. But I started my junior year in triple jumping Jeez. and I, and I jumped 50, I think it was 49, eight in high school, my junior year. Yeah. And then my senior year, I ended up jumping 50. No, yeah. uh, uh, no, I no, you had 52, 52, 52, 52 four. <laughs> right. And, um, but I was, the thing about that is that I always in my training was always trying to make sure that I could duplicate everything. So it wasn't like I I've never had like a big breakthrough jump, like a monster. Right. And then my second jump was nowhere near it. Right. You know, right. There was there was a drop off. Mm. So in my training and everything else, if I'm going to have big jumps, I want to make sure that I can do that at least two or three times in every event. Yeah. And once I'm consistent at being able to do that, then I hit that plateau. I know that big plateau jump will get me to that next level where yeah. I have to be consistent at that level. Oh, my God. You know, so yes. with with that, I incorporate that in my training, no matter mm -hmm. what it is, whether it's um, whether it's bounding, whether it's weight work, whether it's, um, you know, my, my walking stretches, whether it's my flexibility, range of motion. I made sure that I was I had to be consistent and be able to duplicate that at least two to three times every day in practice. Wow. So if you have like a big, good, amazing jump, well, coaches always say hey was that by accident or was that by design yeah and you're like yeah that was by design yes. I'm gonna show you I'm gonna do it again let's go so, so with that with jumping and from high school I would always have those kind of like okay I'm consistent 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 I'm confident that down the road in the next couple of days or next week or so yeah. I'm gonna have that pop plateau jump yeah and it's never failed me Mm -hmm. from high school to college to the next level to to every level i was always looking at that and being like man i'm it's ready to go it's ready yeah. to pop and then once that pops then it's not like okay i'm successful it's like mm -hmm. let me now let me duplicate that yep. at the same track meet so if yep. i have a big bomb jump okay wow that's wonderful what about the second one can i do mm -hmm. do that again so i know my body's ready for that next plateau. Right. And that's where, that's kind of where I was saying about the Olympics. Okay, you can, I would jump only three times at the Olympics because I only had to because we had headwinds. Oh, so I would wow. be like, okay, I'll jump 59.4, I'll jump 59.1 into a 0 .0 headwind. Yeah. And uh, both of my jumps are in the headwind. So I'm like, oh, the big one's coming. Just give me a tailwind at one point. Right, right. So then, boom, I'm going to have that 61 foot jump mm -hmm. that I can now, I'm going to duplicate that one. Yeah. So those, that's how my progressions have always gone. Yeah. So when I try to like teach and let kids know whether it's, whether it's long jump, triple jump, the 400, the hundred, no yeah. matter what it is that they're doing, I make sure that their consistency mm. level is, is on point as yep. opposed to just getting that one pop out and being bragging about, well, I jumped 27, five. Well, what's your second best jump? 26, six. Right. 26 four well that's not the same as being a 27 five jumper though you right 27 five twice at oh, least man. so Mine. that's that's where my mentality is i i know other people have different renditions of it but that's my mentality yeah you know, how to progress and get better so so that's really interesting because I, i've done two other interviews so far and mm -hmm. both of them said the exact same thing they had that experience where like they kind of hit a plateau 
And then all of a sudden it came and like, you know, obviously the first times that happens, you don't realize that you're just going to get frustrated because you're like, yep. why am I plateauing? And then but, towards the later of your experience, yep. then you it realize, comes. Yeah. And, and, but that's where most people would start to quit because mm -hmm. they're plateauing and they're right. like, that's as good as I'm going to get. Yes. I, I guarantee you, I know there's probably 90% of, not 90%, but there's a majority of the athletes that I competed against yeah. that were way more talented than me. Oh, and they would be like, oh, that's some plateau. That, oh, I'm not going to get any better. Mm. But they didn't wait that just one more week, two more weeks. Just give yourself that one more week. And then, boom, you're yeah. going to have that plateau, that breakthrough. And then you're going to be able to maintain that, maintain that. But you can't quit on right. your progressions and, and get frustrated with your progressions. And that's, you know, that's where that's where I think I'm the most proud of myself at is being that patient to wait for that progression to pop through that yeah. breakthrough to come through. I mean, it sounds like you're a pretty optimistic person. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. 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 So, I mean, so, I mean, that's after the experience, that's after the experience of all the hard work and everything else. Right. Throughout when I was doing it, it wasn't the same, but okay. Okay. You know, with it yeah. after the fact hindsight looking back and everything you're like oh yeah i was super you know <laughs> super motivated i knew i could always uh, some days there were dang what's wrong with you you know so, so yeah that's what i was gonna ask did you ever experience that kind of like discouraging feelings absolutely okay. and then it's like sometimes i was gonna quit i was like i was getting close to saying I was, I was fourth in the world and um, I was plateaued out and, you know, it was tough to get track meets yeah. um, for me. It was tough to get into meets when you got four or five other 58 foot jumpers um, if you, in your own country. Right. And then you got the Russians and then you got the Bulgarians and then you got everyone's around that range and you can't get into a track meet if you're jumping 57, five and you're just a sophomore. So there was times I was like, I'm, Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, did they have like limits or something like or there was well, like... there's, there's only a certain amount can get in the event. Wow. And then there's a certain amount of money they're going to pay to a certain amount of people. Gotcha. So yeah, you yep. got the number one in the world as they're only going to pay that person because right. that's the only guy they need to be in the stadium. Yeah. In order to sell tickets. Right. And then they fill in the rest of the lanes kind of deal. Interesting. And that's pretty much it. So they are not going to have at every track meet. They're not going to have top five triple jumps because they got to pay the top five triple jumpers in the gotcha. world gotcha oh so they're not gonna do that they're <laughs> like at every meet so there's meets all over so two guys will go to this meet two guys will go to that meet yeah two guys will be at this meet in europe and then all of a sudden oh. you know we gotta wait till we yeah it's it's a lot of a lot lift, of pol political playtime yeah you know? L lifting you know? the veil on how things actually yeah, work yeah exactly <laughs> nice i'll bring it out yeah this is good um all right so yeah let's let's go back then to high school so you jumped 49 as a junior and then 52 as a senior like right, right. With, with no no prior like training of like no like nowadays we have you know 30 plus years of seeing how people have triple jumped and progressed and the progression right yeah how like yeah. All right. What do you remember key moments of being able to, well, the first one jumping 49 feet. And then how did you, do you remember what changed to go from 49 to 52? Cause 52 is that's three, a three foot improvement in one year. That's crazy. It's a huge, it's a huge improvement. And there's yeah. a lot of factors that are involved in that. Okay. First, I'm also a basketball player and okay. I, I, there's, there's a lot of that training um, that, that is also incorporated. And mm. also I was in gymnastics and, and ballet and things like that so that also like accelerated kind of my training aspect of what mm -hmm. how to how to be one with your body especially in gymnastics especially in ballet you learn your flexibility you know balance in gymnastics you know balance and rotation and how fast and how high you got to be to do certain things yep so making that transition into triple jump and how fun it was to me to actually triple jump for the first time being a long jumper or a triple jumper and a high jumper yeah. in high school to, to figure out how cool it was to do the triple jump is figuring out the drills and things like that so when I was able to I was doing fun stuff before my junior year like you know bounding and plyometrics and those things are fun so when I jumped 49 it was just kind of like oh, just what was happened. that uh, yeah. how far is that 
and then they would show me it's like one of the best in the country yeah you know you're in the top <laughs> 10 in the country as a junior and i was like well wow that's pretty cool so <laughs> yeah. now let's see how far you really can go mm -hmm. by next year because I want to be a 50 foot jumper because yeah. I thought that was kind of like the plateau 50 right. foot I, mean, I created my own little marker that you put in the grass right that said 50 on it yeah designed it in in shop class and all that jazz oh, let's go so, so I put 50 on it and then I was able to jump 50. okay my my first jump over 50 was my like early in my in my senior year yeah and I was like man I could get better and better and better yeah by you know, by my drills, by creating my own workouts and developing and, and, yeah. and learning different, you know, nuances of what was taking place. And because I was also a long jumper, yeah. you know, I was long jumping, you only get to take one jump in the long jump. Yeah. Because you got to go to do the triple jump and then you got to go do the high jump. Yeah. Right? So yep. you don't get a chance to really focus on one event. Right. You know, when you're not because you're trying to score points and everything mm -hmm. else yeah and you're just having fun with your teammates and it's not that big of a deal right right you know, it's not as professional as, as, it, as it is now where everybody's like oh i'm i'm going to the olympics now no dude you're only jumping 52 you're right. not gonna be close yeah to the olympics in high school but with that kind of information it allowed um it allowed me to learn it technically myself and where my body was and how strong and where I was breaking down and yeah. how to kind of fix those things why I was going so high on my hop when I could just lower that a little bit and just yeah. creating it way back in high school and then and learning about momentum and man I'm running out of speed I'm, I'm running out of speed when I get to the pit yeah that kind of stuff why am I doing it let's try to fix that and what what makes how do you do cause and effects to fix that for my body type being a very short jumper right. how do i fix that short and skinny jumper mind you yeah, um, yeah. back then right uh, how do i fix that to be strong enough to handle those kinds of things and being able to do that was one thing but also we i grew up in brookfield wisconsin which yep. is cold in mm. freezing <laughs> and we're and we jump on concrete <clears throat> oh so my gosh the, so the tracks the tracks are not, not designed like the california tracks so right. when I tell people about when you're recruiting, you go to the, you please go out to the Wisconsin areas. You go out to these places where these kids are jumping 46, 47. Yeah. But once they get to these California Mondo tracks and rubber tracks, like right. I was able to, I went from Start 51 bouncing. week to 52. I was like, what is this rubber? Is this, are they serious? <laughs> we get to jump on this? Yeah. And boom. And then I started learning what the, the difference between the tracks densities were mm. and all that stuff. Yeah. how it applied and affected my body boom 52 four and 52 back to back track meets and Dang. all that stuff that's the kind of kind of like passion and kind of understanding of the event that i i put into it from all those years yeah of trying to figure it out kind of yep. on my own that's what kind of applies to making those kinds of big transitions that it wasn't like whoa you made this big breakthrough and that's all you have it's like whoa i made that big breakthrough there's got to be more to the end of this right. tunnel yes. that get, can make me get even better if, if people are jumping 58 11 at the time was right. the world record by Willie Banks. Wow, yeah. And I was like, dude, that is that's a long ways away, but somebody's doing it. How did they get there? Right. So yeah. that's kind of like that's kind of the process to me. And, I love and, that. and not being afraid of it. Not right. being afraid of it and trying to figure it out. So how how different would you say your form was? as a senior in high school from you know when you ended your career oh man i mean i i, I like i said i think we all start out the same mm -hmm. we all try to say what i don't know how to get out of my step phase yeah. i mean get, get my off, off my hop phase and right. then going into step how come everybody's step phase is horrible because it's difficult to bet <laughs> <laughs> because it's difficult and i try to explain to folks look open your car door going 19 miles an hour oh and just say, gosh. I'm going to just jump out the door and just and try roll. to handle that speed. And yeah. Try to handle that speed. <laughs> and I bet you won't. Interesting. So when you're running down the runway at 19 miles an hour, yeah. what makes you think you're going to leave on one leg and come that same leg and don't think you're going to crash and burn or you're going to be afraid of it. Right. Right. And, and once, and once you learn, you know, the training that goes into that and yep. then learn, how much power and strength is going to be able to get you off of the ground back into position right. and, and maintain momentum yep. throughout your phases. 
Yeah. Then you'll start making progressions and not being afraid of that phase because as you watch other jumpers be able to execute it and get better and stronger as their careers develop and get, you know, yeah. as they develop and get stronger and more powerful, right. get that man strength in them yeah, down yep. the road <laughs> and you're able to handle those things, then you don't, you're not afraid of it. Then right. you start getting those big progressions and, and improvements. Interesting. So, so did you always have your massive first phase, like even in high school? Did, like, yeah. So m most people do obviously try to like sky that first phase and then they just collapse, like you said. Yep. But I mean, going 52, you obviously had to be able to handle it to some degree. Right. Do you feel like you were like just naturally strong and that's why you could handle it? Or were you working on some sort of technical aspect that helped you to handle your big first phase when you were well, younger? Well, right. Well, having older brothers, big older brothers, they're all six, two, six, you know, oh, really? six, one. It was strong, powerful. My dad's five, six, four. My dad, Jeepers. my mom's five, ten. So okay. I got cheated. Yeah. <laughs> so Dang. I'm five, nine, five, ten. Wow. But, um, but watching up their strength that they had and what I'm going to grow and develop into, mm -hmm. I, my, my thing was like, I have to have this big old giant hot face. I don't yeah. know. I'm not going to get rid of it and I'm going to get stronger. And one day I'm going to be able to handle getting out of it. Man. So, so that's that. That was always my mentality and my training. Yeah. Um, design yeah. was like I'm just gonna hop as far as I can, no matter what. But I'm gonna be. I have to be able to get out of this and not be afraid right. of that ground coming at me. Yeah. I gotta go get the ground and attack right. it and and be aggressive at getting it. Yeah. And trust me, the progression of doing that over the years, it, if I progressively got stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, <laughs> of course I did eliminate because i i did i do have the longest hop phase ever at 23 four oh um, of, a, of a hop phase recorded on a 57 three foot jump yeah so being able to do that at a with a 57 foot jump yeah my goal my goal was like look if, in order for me to jump 61 62 feet i have to have a 22 foot hop phase at some point yeah. somebody's got to have 22 20 20 yeah or 20 Somebody's got to have 22 somewhere, right, 22, right. 23, something like that. So yep. that was my mentality to have a, a huge hot phase and be able to get out of it. So by design, that was my, my that's, goal in yeah. my progressions. And, you know, that's, insane. that's, a, that's not how I teach it to anybody else. Yeah. But that's was my personal goal because I'm a different body type at five foot 10. I have to do something right. completely different than gotcha. a Christian. Than, right. Right. Than, than somebody who's six two yep. that can get away with some stuff. I yep. can't get away with anything at five foot ten and five foot nine. I think that's an important thing too to bring up is like that there are different body types and so there should be different jumping styles yeah. to a degree. But but of all the different jumping styles, what what do you think are some things that everybody should do probably? I mean, you know, we don't know yeah. everything in 50 years they right. might find out that this stuff is yeah. dumb, but <laughs> Yeah, what, exactly. What, what do you know now that you think would apply to every triple jumper? I think that every triple jumper should understand momentum. Mm. And I, I know all coaches are going to be, I mean, the coaches that I work with, they, they get sick of me saying moment. It's like, you, you got to come down with some more speed, son. I was like, that's not speed. You don't need speed. You need momentum. Mm. So in moment, speed is working hard and generating, generating, forces that aren't necessary mm. if you come down with momentum enough to jump like i'll take momentum for like jumping 60 foot jump i know how much speed i need to go to jump 60 feet yeah i don't have to go oh run my 10 20 100 meter speed coming down yeah. the runway and and i only come down the runway at 70 percent, maybe 75 percent wow. at any given jump no. i've never been able to go over and that's probably why i'm able to jump into headwinds yeah. Because I can start to amp it up a little bit with my speed and, right. and my momentum a little bit to fight against winds. Interesting. But coming down the runway, I'm not going to kill myself going yeah. 100 miles an hour yeah. using my speed. So I say momentum. So I have people just visualize how much momentum will it take you to get to the this point of the pit? Mm -hmm. Just like walking through visualization. Yeah. And it's not a lot of you like, dang, it doesn't really take me that much speed to get to that. That's like, exactly so. Once people understand that concept of the momentum, then 
they're not trying to kill themselves throughout the phases because yeah. they know they have enough speed to get there. And now they can actually work on their mm -hmm. technical stuff in between those, right. those, those three different phases, as opposed to working out fast, I got to get down there and then you're fighting your, your technique yep. as opposed to being comfortable knowing that you have enough speed. Yep. Now I can work on my, my phases. Okay. So, um, everybody's going to have to learn how to get off that hot phase. Right. Oh, and man. that's bottom line. And I don't care. Like Jonathan Edwards, he's a skim jumper. I call mm -hmm. them skimmers. I don't even call them triple jumpers. Yeah. I call Kristen Taylor a skimmer. He's not a triple jumper. Yeah. He's a skimmer. Yeah. And Will Clay's a jumper. He's yeah. got three yeah. distinct phases. Right. And you right. can see him. I'm a jumper. We have three yeah. distinct different phases. But when yeah. you see these guys, they stay really low yeah. to the ground. Like Mike don't Conley. Put, put it, yep, Mike Conley. They don't put a lot of force in their body. Right. And, and everything else. So, so with those differences, who can get out of that first phase? I don't care if you stay super low. You still got to figure out how to get off that first phase, moving yeah. that fast and that low. Yeah. And that's pretty. That's pretty. Just just as impressive as coming from a big high hop as it yep. is coming from flat low speedy trajectory. Right. Right. It's yeah. causing that force. So. So, so momentum is key. I mean, key. I, I don't, I don't know who else would disagree with you on that, but, yeah. um, what are some technical parts of, of that transition from the hop phase into the step phase and then from the step phase into the jump phase that help you maintain that momentum? Um, some of the, some of the technical, technical things that help me are, um, I mean, my drill work, of course, and I don't care from everything from skipping drills where you just skip and work on bah, 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 and working on your foot quickness, yeah. your foot speed, mm. and being able to execute foot, foot speed and pull back force and generating force into the ground. Yeah. Um, learning that technical part when you're in the air waiting for the ground to come to you yeah. is that kind of foot speed in, the, in order to attack the ground so the ground doesn't attack you. <laughs> that last right. second that last second here we go prep to hear the ground's coming that pow to get yeah. up and, and be being able to force that that punch into the ground yeah and i think it's karate um bruce lee when he's <laughs> doing the, the the one inch punch where he's got that one inch and then that one split second then <laughs> pow, yeah and that force that you that one twitch mm -hmm. it's all that's necessary to get you out of a triple jump position wow and that's what I utilize a lot of like karate kind of things. Yeah. That, that like even boxing, when you got that short uppercut, it's not that you're doing a bunch of other stuff. It's that short little pop Just at that. the end. Yeah. That little uh at the end that yeah. gets you off the ground and in a better position. Interesting. That's super interesting. And it's not all those big loping movements. Okay, you can lope, but when are you going to get ready right. to beat fire back at it? Fire back at it. Right. And most kids, it's most kids and even the elite athlete, elite jumpers all float to that phase and they just float through it and yeah. they float through it. And yeah. you don't ever see that boom, that, 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 that aggressive like punch at it. Right. On the, right at the end of every phase. Yeah. And once you see that jumper, you know that you don't even have to, he, you can hear it. Yeah. You won't have to see it. You'll be like, oh, that's a good jump. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you can look around yeah, and yeah. like, oh man. So yeah, that, you, you can cool. always tell on, on a second phase when somebody like hits it right. And they just like, you keep going. You're just yeah. like, oh my gosh. Oh, what they do right. Oh, they attacked it. Right. They attacked it. They Cause, didn't cause, wait for it. Yeah, yeah. Like that third phase, you, anyone can get oh. up, you know, in out of a third phase. But if you have that right. second phase, everybody, it's like the, it's like, oh, what would be the example? It's like the Holy Grail. The, yeah. the, it's like the it's like when you see when you see someone hit it and come out of their hot yep. and boom you're like, like oh uh oh you're like uh oh get ready if they if let's see if they're gonna mess it up <laughs> let's see if they're gonna execute the rest of it or be patient enough to execute right because right. now they're in the air okay. now what are you gonna do right now what are you gonna do <laughs> and, and that's where a lot of people just screw up their big monster jumps because they're like so impatient because that's the first time they actually hit that step phase. Right. Or you see them all of a sudden get like, like oh, out of, shoot. Oh. Yeah. Out of, out of whack. So crazy, crazy. That's huge. That's a key for me. Okay. Yeah. So, so momentum and then that, I don't even, what, what would you call it? Just like, I just call it me. I call it Bruce Lee because it's, Bruce that's Lee. how I, that's how I taught it to myself. I was yeah. just like that one inch that at the, I should be fast enough and explosive enough 
for that last second adjustment yes. just boom just everything at the same time fire yes. the ground and ex execute all the force of the ground yes at that one split second yep it will get me right back up in the air and maintain all of my momentum yes i don't i don't ever want to lose that moment yep that's, that's what and i'm going to call it happens. i'm going to call it the one inch punch one inch punch yeah there you go so you gotta get momentum good takeoff and then one inch punch on each pow! transition yep. yep. transition pow and that's oh. it all right sweet that's it that's great um okay so let's go back then 52.4 what was your next did you did you kind of plateau at 52.4 did you start to progress after that to 53s 54s well 50 i went from 50 no i went 52.4 then my uh freshman year in college um i went 55, 55 holy smokes 55 right 55 <laughs> Now, but now, but that's after 55 because I never lifted weights in high school. Oh, never okay. Never picked up a weight in my life. Right. And now I'm working with a strength and conditioning coach and I'm yeah. getting, I'm getting new arms, new <laughs> legs are getting powerful and yep. a little bit bigger. I, I, I'm learning how to run correctly. Mm. My technical, my running technique was free and everywhere. Right. Now I'm running like my, my guy is Carl Lewis trying okay. to duplicate that. That running technique with the hands open, elbows and knees to 90, 90, 90, 90, executing body position, forward tip. But once I started trying to do that and how hard that was, I was mm -hmm. like, I thought I could just hop up and do that position. No, dude. Right. It takes a lot of work to get into that position Amen. to make it look that efficient and, right. and make it that efficient so you're not working hard. But yeah. moving fast. Right. Not hard. It's it's funny that you say that. And I didn't know that about you that you intentionally modeled your running after Carl Lewis. But I was watching some of your videos, you know, and I was like, Yo. dude, he runs just like Carl Lewis on the <laughs> runway. I was like, I was I would be like, look, it's the most efficient. I wanted to be, like I said, just momentum. Yeah. If I can get up to momentum and speed and momentum so that I'm not working on the runway, right. there's no working. I have enough speed to just yep. be chill, chill, chill. Now I can, all my work is gonna happen after the board. Right. Not running to the board. And then yeah. now I gotta work after the board too. Right. It's horrible. It doesn't so, make sense. So that learning started in my freshman year, learning how to run correctly, great technique, over-exaggerating knee lift, knee drive, arm angles, all through training yeah. and, and all that stuff. And not backing off of it and trying to change it, but just sticking to that technical stuff. Yeah. That automatically got me from 52.4 to 55 feet uh, my very first year. Gotcha. So, and then I stayed pretty consistent at 55, you know, throughout the year. Had lots of, had injuries. So I missed, you know, like second half of certain years, second half of okay. every year. I never had a whole complete full season because I was no. killing myself. Really? Was oh, it yeah. I, was, I your... was overtraining. Oh, really? Yeah, I was but, getting stress fractures and all kinds of stuff. Was was the overtraining on your part or was it like my, coaching? And I don't mean no, to blame, but you no, know. no, no, mine, mine, okay. mine, mine. Because so I was self coach. Because I okay. would do, I would do even in college. Uh, college, yes, even in college, oh, they would okay. do my speed and the speed conditioning, yeah. hurdle work, kind, you know, all the other stuff, triple jump, long jump, yep. and stuff. That was on me. Gotcha. So, okay. So, but wow. the bounding plyometrics and all the drills that it takes to do the triple jump, those are mine. <laughs> right. Wow. Okay. So with that, with that, um, I, I would bound like, you know, 10 times, 100 yards, um, yeah. 10 times, 100 <laughs> yards with jog back in between 10 to, to, to a thousand you, yards of bounding. A thousand yards, but I would go 1500, like a, a mile. Sheesh. I wanted to do a mile of bounding. So it would be all <laughs> Alternate leg bounce for 100 yards, then single leg for 50 yards on both sides for three. Yeah. So three, three and three. So that's 600. So that puts me at 1,600 yards. Then you got double leg hops of bleachers. You got all that stuff. Then right. you got to go to the weight room. Right. So I was doing all that stuff on top of, you know, the, the, the speed yeah. work, the conditioning, yep. the running work, you know, all that jazz that you right. had to do for other events. Mm hmm so all that stuff together. So so knowing what you know now, how would you change your training in college? 
Oh, I would I would have been chimed down. I would be I would only I would probably bound for a thousand. I would still do the ten times one hundred yard bound. Okay, yeah. But then I would definitely do that. There's no way I could have had the progressions that I've had without that foundational stuff way back Interesting. then. Interesting, yeah. Um, but I would be a little bit smarter with um, you know, a lot of the other things like like combining the bounding with the the weight training, the heavy weight training leg day. Yeah. with my heavy bounding okay. i probably would make like some adjustments on those things separate them sure. a little bit make yeah. those adjustments and then also incorporate a lot more of my um my running workouts um because i ran a lot of quarters a lot of 400s um, oh, in college um a lot of relays and four by twos four i mean four by ones four by fours yeah 200s you know all that stuff at the same time, but I would have incorporated a lot more of that strength type of rain, running it, it, with taking the, away some of that bounding, some of that bounding out of my, my um, you know, breaking my body down a little bit sure. and building strength with muscle and endurance would have allow me to be a little bit more healthy as I made my progressions yeah. through college. Okay. Through college. That's super interesting. So, so what kind of injuries did you have? Like, I know you... I know of just of the yeah. one knee injury in '92, yeah. but what what else? Yeah, well, I had uh, uh, I had um, cracked my tibia as a freshman, as a freshman in in uh, college. Yeah. So I had a stress fracture, good good size stress fracture across my tibia, so that helped me out for about a year. Was uh, that on your uh, takeoff hop leg? leg? Hop leg, okay. yeah. That makes Long sense. jump leg and hop leg, oh, both are the same. So. Oh, okay. There was a lot of strain, and then basketball. You know, I played a lot. Of, I played basketball. That was my first thing in, in high school, so that that right. put a lot of pounding on me. Okay. A lot of dunking on people. A lot of that <laughs> stuff. Yes, sir. So, so that stuff, but all that combination into your freshman year and the new weights mm. and everything else, that kind of and gaining extra pounds and right. carrying this extra size on you and trying right. to triple jump now. So that had a toll on it as well. But okay. with that, and then. As you, as we started doing more speed and, and and me becoming more like a sprinter, you know, I was running 45 splits and 44 splits on our four by fours, and Sheesh. you know, doing the, the relays of the four by ones. You, yeah. you know, we're running low, you know, nines and, and low tens and nines yeah. in those in those in relays. Nines, yeah, and hamstring injuries started coming into play and being part of like, gotcha. hey man, I was, you're messing up my triple jump now. Yeah, so yeah. Those kinds of injuries and and being able to make up, being able to balance that stuff. Like I said, I'm I'm always like the guinea pig for okay how to how to train in triple jumping, right? Because yeah. I was able to go through this stuff at a super super high level of of overtraining, yep. so to speak. Yep. Of overtraining to see what it's going to be possible for my body type, number right. four, but what I would never do to anybody else in the world, <laughs> right? <laughs> ever. Yep. <laughs> but but. But but take it. I would be able to take a person to that level. Be like, mm -hmm. okay, you're good here. We're going to maintain at this yeah. level. It's not necessary for you to do X, Y, and Z. Okay. But to to be able to make that um, those injuries or go, fight through those injuries and then and then still make those progressions mm -hmm. gave me a little bit more confidence. Is okay. I'm always going to be okay, even through a little bit of injury. I I can fight back. I can take a year off. I can take six months off. This yeah. pandemic wouldn't even affect me because I know right. how to manipulate training yes. to be ready yep. when it's time to go. And Love that's, it. that's another big thing for me is being prep my meat preparation, training preparation and getting my body ready on a certain day <laughs> or ready for anything. Right. I think I'm 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 I think I'm the best at that than anybody mm -hmm. in the world at Love doing it. that. And I think that's why I'm I've been successful in my career. Yeah. Like I can I can take off the whole, I don't have to go to five or 10 track meets in order to be able to give you a mark. Yeah. A huge mark. I can show up at your track meet and give you because of what I've go. done in practice. Yeah, yeah. I've done it in training. Wow. So, Interesting. Okay. So what, what years were you in college at case? 84, 84 to 88. Okay. Gotcha. So your senior year was that first Olympics. Yep. The Olympic I, trials. Yep. Yeah. D d and you made it no, to that no. one? Oh no, the Olympic trials. I was at the Olympic trials my out of high school going in my freshman year at Kansas State. I went to Olympic trials on the junior team. Oh really? Won okay. The juniors on the juniors. Okay. And 
and then went to Olympic trials and that's when Willie Banks, I saw Willie Banks and all these amazing, and Al Joyner, yeah. and all these amazing, all these, you're your idols. And I'm on the runway now after winning juniors, now you're going to the Olympic trials. Yeah. And, they're on, and I'm coming down, put my marker on the runway. And Willie Banks said, man, get off the runway. <laughs> he said, get off. He goes, hey, you got to get off the runway. And I was like, oh, that's Willie Banks. Oh, did he just tell me to get off the runway? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. I said, that's, that can't happen ever again. <laughs> so that's good. That, that was my, that was my mindset. I was like, this dude just told me to get off the runway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Heck no. I'll see him again. I'm going to see him again. That got me like juiced. Yeah. To, yeah. Like, really like progress. And that would, but that was one of the really cool moments. Cause I was, that was one of my idols. Yeah. What, sorry. Was he telling you to get off the runway? Cause he was about to do it. He was uh, coming. Okay. Yeah, get off the way. <laughs> Get out hey, the boy, way, uh, young man. Run you over. Get out the yeah. way, dude. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh shoot. man. No, shoot. <laughs> Rookie. Okay, that's the way it is? Yeah. You know, because in high school, you telling everybody, hey, I'm on, they see you on the runway, they get, everybody moves out the way. Right. They're like, oh, God, Kenny Harris, that guy jumped 50 feet. And so uh, <laughs> we're only jumping 42s. Yeah. He jumped 50. So everybody would be like, okay, if you're on the runway, it's kind of like your runway yeah. kind of thing. So it, it's it's kind of funny thing that when that that happened to me, that's the slap down moment. Like, yeah, youngster, watch out. Yeah, this is this is grown men doing this now. That like, yeah, oh boy. that that's good though, and I feel like that was probably a benefit for you and for anybody who's oh. coming up and good, you know, to like be, be humble to keep themselves yes. humble. Um, right man like what like it, it did it did it made me super it made you understand i mean when i my first thing my i got to kansas state mm -hmm. my uh, head coach steve miller he sent me on like international like all the the meets like sun kiss invitational indoor meets and stuff uh, against the the best of the best like yeah. the most powerful and i came out there and guys had muscles dude i mean grown <laughs> men with beards we're competing against with hamstrings and the, the muscle that goes across around the top of your kneecap. Yeah. They had the muscles that go around the top of your kneecaps and traps and arms. And I was like, I got to, and you can feel them come down the runway. Boom, boom. And I mean, on outdoor track. Yeah. Yeah. Them. Like who the, who is coming down to you looking like, am I in the right place? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was scary. And I try to tell you the youth and young kids and you know you I know you see other people doing great things and you know you want to get to that level but you don't see yourself there. Yeah. And in that moment I try to explain that kind of that kind of story because that's how I felt. I was like, "Man, are you kidding me? These are grown men. I'm a little kid." Yeah. And I'm supposed to try to beat these guys. Hmm. I, how long is it going to take me for me to get that kind of muscle, that kind of speed, that kind of this? Right. But you either uh, fight or flight. So I'm like, don't, don't flight because yeah. your body's going to naturally get better. Right. You gotta, you gotta trust the process kind of thing. And that gave me my first like <clears throat> understanding, like, oh my goodness, I, yeah. there's no fight. I'm fighting. There's no flight in this. I Let's want go. some of that. Yeah. I want some of this down the road. <laughs> Somebody's going to pay. So are, it's kind of cool. Are, are you the youngest of your siblings? uh youngest boy yeah youngest We're boy okay. younger sister yeah so i mean you've kind of had that your whole life though like you know someone a little bigger oh, or older always big always taller always yes. gotta slay the giant just yeah be, yeah everybody's gonna get some down the road let's go <laughs> kind of kind of mentality let's go Love you know that. that's my mentality yeah I, I mean i'm you know like everybody used to say dude you're so mean and track me it's like i'm not there dude. i'm there to make you quit i'm not there to be your friend yeah. I'm not there for anything. I want, when you see me jump, I want you to be like, I quit. I need to go get a nine to five job <laughs> because what he's doing is not the same event as what I'm yes. doing. I want to, to get rid of the competition. Wow. <laughs> that, the road. I love that. That's, That's my amazing. mentality when I walk out there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it, it's, it's interesting that you, you pointed out like how, you know, how much bigger those guys felt because like in other sports, it's, it's obvious. Like, you know, when you go to a professional baseball game, the ball, the ball is coming oh, off the bat so much harder here to, football. Yeah. Like the dudes are just massive, but I never yeah. think of that with track, you know, cause like, yeah. I think maybe cause the, the video is only always on one person. So you never have that side yep. by side comparison. Side like, by side. That it, it's yeah, really cool. Some... I think. Oh, go ahead. 
Yeah, I was just gonna say, just I mean, that's why I love track and field. You need yeah. you you don't run track and field and come out there and you got some you're overweight or you got a little <laughs> belly. You walk out there and there's some specimens walking around out yeah. there in every event. Yes. And if you're not checking out like dang, I got, I got work to do. If you're not know understanding that part of it from a yep. very young age, you're like then knowing that you need to step your game up on every path facet of everything. Yeah. Then man, it, then you're, you're then you're missing out on the whole aspect of what track and field is all about. Right, right. So, so what's your take then on these uh, like football players and other athletes talking about you know like who who's the, who's got the fastest, the strongest, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I first of all, I'm gonna say triple jumpers are the supreme beings of the universe. Ooh. Bottom line, I'll, I'll put. <laughs> If, if you want to go, I would tell any NBA player, any NFL player, anybody, baseball, golf, whatever you want to do, yeah. we'll just go out and do athletic movements. Let's just go see your, your, your bird. Let's see your speed. Let's see you catch a football. Let's see you throw a football over yeah. the top. Let me see that skill. Let me see you scoop a, a, a baseball. Let me see you throw it from out home, from center field to home plate. Let me see your accuracy. Let me see all of that, which you claim that you are. Yeah. And being a trainer of NFL players, Major League Baseball players, all these other athletes. Yeah. I'm glad that you guys play a game, period, because that you play the game. Yeah. If you guys were athletes first and then played your game, you guys would all be like Jordan and LeBron James. But they're not. They do not take the time to work on that speed, that running technique. Yeah. They don't yeah. take the time to go work on that plyometric, that get off the ground, how much higher or further can I jump off of either one leg or both legs dynamically? Yeah. How much, how do I work on my athleticism to take it to my game? Yes. Now, if a NFL player or NBA player did do these kinds of training drills, and some of them kind of try to do it, but they don't do a lot of it because we want to go to practice and practice our game. Yeah. Period. We don't want to work on how good we can be. Mm. That's just like when they have to do line drills or in the in NBA and they you're like, when well, we got to run today, dude, and it sucks and they get tired and like coach is like, why do we got to keep running? Dude, you're working on your cardio. You're not even working on your running technique or your, your yeah. athleticism or your agility, your speed, your explosive power. Right. But then after they do that, they go right into their drills, slide drills, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Shuffle, yeah. shuffle, shuffle. That's not being an athlete, dude. You're working on being a basketball player. Interesting. Now, if you worked on being an athlete first, then went and did your shuffle, 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 and your <laughs> your line drills, dude. You know how much better each one of those NBA players would be. How much yeah. better an NFL player would be, and how easier the game would be for them, and how much longevity <clears throat> they will have down the road. Yep. That's that's all I have to say about those, the, the, the difference between a uh, uh, NFL player and a track and field person. Right. Is bottom line, bottom line is track and field is just training to be yeah. the best athlete you can be. Then you yeah. go play your game yeah. after we're done doing that. And that's it. That's good. That I mean, that it, it's so obvious when you watch football, which guys have ran track in their past and which guys haven't. Oh yeah. Like there, there was actually a quarterback, I, I'm forgetting which team or whatever, broke through the line and was running and just like oh. tripped over himself. Cause he didn't like, he did, he couldn't pick his knees up. Right. It was just all he backside mechanics. Change, <laughs> he can't change, he can't change gears because right. there's no gear changing. Yep. And what, that's what they fail to understand in, in a, like the NFL. And I will say this about the NFL. I apologize to all my people that I've worked with in the past. Um, you know, I won't name any of you guys name on here. Um, but they they have longevity in the NFL and the NBA, and they've had long careers due yeah. to some of the training and the concepts behind yeah. what it takes to be an athlete first mm. and go play your game. Yeah. But as far as just the, the speed, the NFL, all you do is put those lines on your field to make it look like you guys are running fast. <laughs> you got all the hash marks and stuff. So when the guy turns the corner, he's like, look at that speed. Yeah, he looks like he's running past these lines so fast, but he's not going anywhere. Yeah, not, yeah. It, that's not the same. <laughs> they, we're going to start putting lines on the track. Yeah. So, oh, people can, so it looks like Could everybody can look super fast. And we'll put a rabbit out on the side of the track. So we can, sh like the camera that rides by the, goes along with the sprinters. Yeah. Show that. 
so you can see the exact speed of how fast that camera looks right. compared to how fast those guys are moving. Absolutely. I, I heard an idea from someone one time that they said they should just take a random Joe Schmo from the crowd and have him run in every race and like compete in every event just to give oh, oh. perspective <laughs> oh i just i'll just take an nfl i'll take any player anybody Woo. well track and field is anybody yeah. it's not like you gotta like if i want to play in the nfl mm -hmm. and and you have enough skill to go play no they're not gonna let that happen because it's the network they can't let you come out there and embarrass their players because then the nfl doesn't have their gravity of who they are <laughs> Now, if you come out there running better than their athletes and catching balls and you know you can throw over the top and you got a nice tight spiral, they're not gonna let you go. You gotta go through a training camp. You gotta get a scout. You gotta have an agent to get there. You gotta go through all this stuff. They're not yeah. just gonna let little little guy over here just come out there and, and try out. That's yeah. not gonna happen. Yeah. Because that's it's that good old boy network kind of thing. And it's not gonna happen. But in track and field, anybody from the world, anybody in the world could go sign up for a track meet at any track yeah. get out there run your time and then you're in the system let's yep. go now yep. you have the ability to go out there and perform at the highest highest levels so yeah. love that that's what i would i would love i would love all the nfl players come on out get some yeah <laughs> get some nba players come get some let me yep. see you guys jump from the free throw line and dunk it which is 15 feet woohoo yeah <laughs> <laughs> Add another 12, 13. another another 45 feet. Let yeah. me see what you guys got. So that's Crazy. beautiful. That's beautiful. Awesome. Cool, cool. All right. So I think we left off. We were talking about yep. college and injuries and then your Olympic yep. experiences. That's where we were. Um, so you said the trials were your first kind of Olympic experience, your freshman the year. The, the freshman year, yep. Freshman year. Okay. First first attempt and then uh your second one was in 88 88 88 yeah that okay. was a tough one that was that, a tough one oh that really was, that was a that was a tough one i, I slapped to the face kind of like i thought it was i thought i was going to retire after 1988 because i was going to win the break the world record and um and i wanted to uh win my gold medal there and be done oh I, really that's, that's all i wanted to do in track and field is just be the number one in the world yeah, that didn't know anything about it. I just want to be number one in the world. And I want to break the world record. Wow! I don't care. About, I don't care about track meets. I don't care about how many times you get to go there. I don't. That's that's never been a mentality of mine. Yeah. So yeah. now they start talking about the most rated, whatever. I want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. But the bottom line is that's what I wanted to do. So, but in '88, when I missed making the team by two inches, oh, and I think I jumped 57 and seven and 57 10 made the team okay and man and then those guys went on and they didn't make the finals of the yeah Olympics. yeah and i was hot and i was hot I was yeah like, are you kidding me and that's what i'm talking about consistency right if right you're able to jump 57 you should be able to do that three times in this meet right. then you're definitely going to be able to do it at the olympics yep. three times and you're going to be able to do it at the olympic finals at right. least two times and when they couldn't go get to that level again yeah. They were at that level at the Olympic trials. And then when they went to the games, they weren't able to get to, they were jumping 55s and 56s and couldn't get to the, mm -hmm. they, you know, the 58s that they were jumping at the trials. Yeah. I was like, well, that's, that, that defeats the point, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. That defeated the point to me. So I knew that I had to wait another four years. Man. It did so that seem like. Did that seem like an eternity at that point? Yeah, was it was it like, like it, that was the time where you're thinking, well, maybe I'm going to do my corporate job. I'm going to work in marketing, public relations, and wow. use my college degrees and, and yeah. move forward. And, you know, in, incorporate that with my, you know, sports and all that jazz and, you know, yep. traveling yep. and all that goodness. But, yeah, I was like, oh, it's time to go. This is four more years of training and going to all these beats around the world and traveling around the world and not sleeping in my bed. Yeah. Man. This is gonna be ah, all right. Let's <laughs> get tough. it. Let's yeah. get it. The next day after the, you finish crying in the parking lot, <laughs> the, the day after you didn't make the, the team, yeah, it's back to work. Two days Man. later, love starting that. Starting over. Yeah, starting over, and no, that's no the process. Off. And then that's the the very next uh, eighty eight. Then then ninety, 
90 is when I had my big breakthrough. It's okay. when I jumped 5810. Okay. And the world record was 5011. And I was and I was the I was the number two jumper in the in the history of the world in yeah. 1990. And I was jumping 58 feet three times every track meet though. Yeah. So two times, three times when most people only jump once in their whole careers. Right. I was jumping that every, th three times every track meet all European season. Sheesh. So that's when I was like, okay, now that that plateau is going to come. Yep. Because I'm jumping 58 like three times every track meet. Right. 5810. What's coming after this? 61. What's who? What's next? What's the next plateau? Love so it. So I'm just like, so I'm like going to track meets, and I would tell people well, I only need to jump in once, because if I I'm not going to beat myself up. I'm not right. trying to get injured. So why do I have to jump six times when I can only <laughs> jump, jump once and win? I can jump once and I'm I'm winning. Yeah. So I would jump 58. And then the second best jump will be like 56, five, 50 Conley, then will be 57, maybe. Yeah. And I would be jumping six 58, five. I would be to win, move on to the next track meet or start training. Wow. And the next track meet, I jump 58. And me promoters would get mad because they're like, <laughs> Our crowd wants to see you break the world record. And I was like, well, you're not paying me for the world record. You Ooh, said. Yeah. So I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah. I'll wait till I get back to the United States. And that that was my mentality because I don't want to beat myself up, traveling around, jumping, jumping myself out and yeah. killing myself. Because the ultimate goal was to, of course, was I thought was to break the world record and win a gold medal. Yeah. So I just yeah. kept passing. That's an interesting thing too uh about like the i don't know i don't want to call it like the average person but the non non track athlete observing a meet like that you know especially throughout the season you know and these yeah. guys like bolts not running a nine five every single meet like right that's that's yeah. not the point <laughs> right. like, they're trying, right. trying to uh time it out so that you're competing at your best at you know that, that last one. at the at the major championships exactly. and at that time it's it to me track meets are, are practice yeah it's like uh, going to school it's a you're taking quizzes you take a quiz you take a quiz you take a quiz then you got the final yeah and that's where you got to have all the knowledge from all the quizzes mm. you study all the quizzes and then you put all your quizzes together and then you got your final exam and then you better be able to perform at that final exam in order Love to get that. your grade yeah and that's you know, that's how I teach my kids too with athletes and everything. And it's the same thing. Track meets don't go there to win. You can't win the Olympic gold medal at every track meet. Yeah. Period. Yep. You're supposed to be working on stuff during those track meets. Yeah. So wow. you're not supposed to be killing yourself. So <laughs> yeah, that's a super good analogy. I'm gonna definitely use that. Quizzes and For sure. final. Um yeah. <laughs> so you said 90 was your breakthrough. Do, do you remember anything yep. that changed for you physically or technically that helped you kind of go from 55 to seven and 58? Yeah, 57, 58 and 50 and then 59, 58, 10. Yeah. So yeah, that the transition was that I didn't have to work as hard on the runway. That, Interesting. That, that thing that finally that clicked in. Yeah. That I, could, I didn't have to use energy on the runway to be fast enough to jump mm. that far. Yeah. And then, then I could work on just those three punches. Remember yeah. those, yep. those, one inch punch. those three one inch punches? Yeah. Uh, it's two one inch punches. There's only two jumps. Right, right. Two, two punches. That's all you got. Yeah. You only got to punch somebody. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> and that and that's it. So yep. once I realized that now I'm I have enough speed, I'm rolling. I don't gotta do any work on the runway. And all I gotta do is really be aggressive twice. Yeah. And that's in flight, and that's that's progression, of course, throughout your training for years and years and years right. to get to that point that you can say that to somebody and be like, this is the how effective I've become from doing all those things prior. Yeah. You know, all the training that comes prior. But the effectiveness that I was able to make by being in that good of shape and that that powerful and explosive at the time made everything so much easier. So that when I come down the runway, I never had to worry about my steps. I never worried about fouling. Yeah. I, never, I was so consistent. You know, I, mm. every first jump, if I'm going to come down here, if I'm going to come compete at your track meet, yeah. my first jump is going to be the bomb and it's going <laughs> to be on point. So yeah. I'm always prepared 100% for that first jump. So 
all that stuff became super easy for me, like the runway, the approach. Then all I had to do, the hard work was only those two things. Yeah. And that was that was being able just to focus on those two things. So it was yeah. kind of like cheating to me. Yeah. It's kind of like cheating because I was like, I'm not working. This is not hard. Right, right. It's not hard anymore. I, I worked so hard to make this easy. So yeah. all I got those to do is those two punches. Yeah. And then my mentality to say, let me see if I can duplicate that again. Mm. And being able to go back and duplicate it, it might not feel as good as the first one. Yeah. But the distance on being able to get that same distance with even average technique now right. and duplicating that that's when I knew, okay, that's the breakthrough I was looking for. Wow. So that 58, um, a, a perfect example is um, my first national championship was in 90 and um, I jumped 56-4 and the, mm. the, the announcer comes over and he goes, Mr. Harris, this is your first championship. Are you excited about that? And I was like, no, it was crap. That yeah. I've just, uh, that was crap. He's like, what do you mean it's crap? You won. I was like, no, I didn't come here to, to win. Mm. My goal was to jump 58.5 here mm. today. And he said, but then your PR is 57.7 or something. I said, but I'm my body is ready now. That plateau, yes. I'm prepared. And I was physically ready, everything, mentally. Yeah. Boom, my body felt amazing. Yeah. And it wouldn't come out. Yeah. And, and I was like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. I'm checking the track. I said, okay, the track's a little soft. So what? I'm right. still capable of jumping 57.5, right. but I'm, I came here to jump 58.5. Yeah. And the guy and the guy just laughs at me. And, he, and I hear him just go, Psh, this kid doesn't know what he's talking about. Hmm. The very next track meet, that very next week, I go yeah. to Stockholm, Sweden, and I jump 58.10. Boom. And I was like, now that's what I was talking about. It's like, I knew it was, was in like, there. Now, where were you? Yeah. Last week, when this guy was talking in mess. Right. right here, I yeah. said, where was that last week? when I was prepped for this. Yeah. I wasn't prepped for it then. It was cold, it was chilly in Stockholm, mm. but it 5810 came out. And then I jumped yeah. 581 and 582. I was Jeez. like, where did that, where was that? Right. That's when, so now I'm like, okay, you never know when your big jumps are coming. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I learned a lesson then. You know, okay. you can feel amazing and it right. still might not come out. You can't yeah. be patient. You gotta be patient and trust it. Trust your technique, trust it, trust the situation. Then boom, the 58 comes out of nowhere, 10, you know, almost break the world record by an inch. And you're like, well, what, 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 what's the difference? What happened? Yeah. And you, I, did, I didn't know. And it's just like, a car, you can't really explain it. It's yeah. just, you're, you're prepared for it, but happened. when is it going to come out? Who right. knows? Who knows? But yeah. you better be prepped for it because this could come at any given time. Man, that's but crazy. That, then that, but then after that, after that, that's when I was consistent, consistency, consistency. So 58 this meet, 58 that meet, 58 mm. the next meet. Yeah. Take a take a go back to the United States, take two weeks, got weeks off, get your weight training back in, come back, 58 again, 58 Ooh. again. So yeah, you know, that kind of consistency and strength and confidence came from kind of like that breakthrough, not knowing when stuff was gonna happen for you. Yeah. And, you know, being surprised by it and then never giving up on it and right. trusting it yeah and, um and then just trusting your technique and and then everything will work itself out yeah and that's where where that came from if if you had to speculate about why you think that that one meet you just couldn't hit it even though you felt ready and then the next the yeah. following meet you did and like you said like it you didn't think there was anything different what what do you think maybe was the case now in hindsight like i think there's a combination of things. I think like pre-meet preparation, how long, you know, did I get to the meet okay. a day prior, two days yeah. prior? And that's when I started calculating what, you know, when, I, when do I perform the best? Yeah. Is it a day, is it a day out? Is it the day I get there in Europe? You know, I travel for eight, nine hours, 10 hours. If I go to Japan, it's 11, 13 hours. Then I got a day off, day off, or do I, you just get off the plane and go before that? that, that right. uh, jet lag hits you okay. and compete? Or do you wait three days? When Try are you the worst? So you make that adjustment. So those yeah. kind of things become part of your training, are part of your performance. Yeah, Like yeah. how are you gonna perform the next day? And yep. what do you need to do to, 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 to fix that? So it's yeah. not an issue for you. 
So doing that, I, from that point forward, I started doing that stuff with my career. Yeah. Going, like looking into all those things. And what I figured uh, now is that I got into town two days, two days before or two days before. So I was like on that jet lag kind of thing. Yeah. Like thing. And I was like, like sluggish. And yeah, I, even though I wanted to win my body, I didn't give my body a best opportunity to perform yes. at its highest level. Okay. And then when we, when the next meet, when I got into um, Stockholm, I knew I had, I, I felt fresher. Yeah. I got to do warm up my legs underneath me a little bit, yeah. but I didn't feel great. I was still a little sore, but that little soreness, I think, let me know, oh, your body's responding. It's doing, going to do something, but yeah, we figure it out. And that's when I started learning a lot more about your body and how it performs and how it competes during different, different travels, different scenarios, different, you know, gotcha. how, 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 um, how nervous, how, how calm you are, all those things start coming into part of what makes you become a champion and, and yeah. you know, to compete at a very high level. Yeah. When push comes to show kind of thing. That's super interesting. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so then let's move on to the, the next year. That would be World Championships, right? 91? Yep, 91. Right. Oh, well, I forgot there was Goodwill Games. That was the big World Championship for us back then. Because we didn't have World Championships every two years like the kids have now. Oh, okay. We have them every four years. Oh. So they just started making the transition around 90, but nobody was, you know, they had to boycott in 80 for the Olympics. So nobody oh, yep, was really yep. going to the Olympics. Yeah. You know, the Russians didn't go to 84. Gotcha. Because we didn't go in 80 and all that jazz. So <laughs> so Ted Turner said, I want everybody competing at the same time. So we created the world the Goodwill Games. Oh, that's so cool. The Good Goodwill Games was a world title. So okay. they had all the best people around the world competing. Yeah. And that was like my first world title to me. And so what year what year was that? 1990. 90. Oh, okay. Gotcha. 90, 90. So everybody, all the best, they, in the, they take the best eight in the whole world, no matter who it is. Ooh. And the Goodwill Games was top two in every country. And then you get to pick one, 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 one other person okay. that you might think can compete at the super high level Yeah. or that qualifies at that level. So wow. top two. So, so they, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh no! So that just lets you the, the the standards of making the team was top two. Yeah, you know you're not even top three. You don't yeah. even get to go if you're if you're the bat, the third wheel out. So yeah, that I claimed as the world title. So that was like my first world title, uh, one on my last jump, which gave me a little bit of extra confidence. So uh, I was struggling that meet too because I was jump fifty eight ten earlier, and yeah. then I was jumping all these fifty eights, and I couldn't hit fifty eight if my life depended on me that day. Yeah, I told me that my last jump, and I was able to jump 58-1, and and I ended up winning. Oh wow! But I was putting so much pressure on myself because I wanted to break the world record there in the, on right. American soil and all that yeah, jazz. Yeah, so, all that jazz. But that was my first title. So okay, moving on to the next year. No, no, that's okay. Um, so who else was in in that meet for the U.S. then? Mike Conley. Mike Conley, and then Mike Conley, and uh, I think uh, there was nobody else made to qualifying standard gotcha so okay you know and so there's the russians the cubans the yeah you know they had the the, the brazilians you know they had the polish they had some they had, the field was solid man yeah the field is always solid at the goodwill games for the jumps especially okay sweet um what was i gonna say uh, uh, uh oh how did how did mike conley do at the goodwill games did he get second he was second he was you second. guys went one two Oh, yeah, well, awesome. I want to. I beat him on my last jump. That's he was awesome. he was first, and I, was, I had to take him out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my is is he a similar age to you, or is he older? A little bit older. A little bit older. I think okay. he's three years older. Three years older. Three years older. Yeah. So did did you look up to him at all, or was he close enough in age that he was just a competitor? He was just somebody I could I just I had to be. I just didn't like him at all. I could have <laughs> didn't. I couldn't stand. I could didn't like him at oh, all. Really? I didn't like. I didn't like his technique. I didn't like it. I was just like, I just didn't like him at all. And I mean that, I mean that in competition wise. I mean, personally, she's an awesome person. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we play basketball, we used to do all stuff, you know, in practice before, after stuff, yeah. goof around, all that jazz. But competing, I, all jumpers I couldn't stand. I just didn't like them. I sure. just didn't like them. Yeah, just yeah. get away from them. Busy. <laughs> I'm busy doing work. Here. <laughs> busy. 
<laughs> right, awesome. figuring this out. <laughs> so sweet. So, but for sure. But at compete wise, no, absolutely not. I it was always a good day if you were able to get close to Mike Conley, first of all. Yeah. But to be able to finally be like an idol, like a somebody who was so established and so like Hall of Fame. <laughs> he's right, to, right. To me, he's the best jumper in the history of the world, long wow. and triple. Yeah. By far, you know, 28, wow. 50, 59, 20. 28, yeah. five ish, and, yeah. and ran 20, 2002, 200. Wow. NCAAs. Okay. Yes, he was like, I think was he placed at NCAAs in the 200. Okay. Freak, yeah, nasty. Yeah. Just a, but he's the, he's the icon. So, dang, that's awesome. Maybe I'll, I'll reach out to him, see if he'd be interested. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's true. Plus, he's got his son playing hoop too. Oh, Mike okay. Mike Jr. Oh yeah, yeah. Then, yeah. You could, then you could you could have that conversation about athletes. Yep. You get them both on here. <laughs> you, could, you could talk to his son. Who's a better athlete? Because mm. Mike Conley played basketball in college too at a very very high level. Okay. And gotcha. um, and his son is a, a all pro Man, NBA yeah. player. So to, to hear that out of their hear that in their words would be pretty cool. To hear. Right. Right. Did Mike Conley Jr. do track at all in high school? I'm not, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't keep up with that. Okay. I would love to hear if he did. Yeah. That'd be but interesting. I think they, I think they went straight to who, because you know, Mike was a basketball, like that, that's his thing too. Okay. He's like me. I love basketball. It's the, the bomb. I don't care. Okay. Yeah. Basketball I was going to ask great. that. Yeah. It, it, is track your favorite sport or is basketball or is there another one that well, track is my track is my passion. Yeah, uh, basketball is my favorite sport. Gotcha. Growing up, to, so. to play and the, watch. I say fa favorite game. It's not a sport. It's my favorite <laughs> game. There you go. It's my favorite game. Um, yeah. To, to watch, especially college. Mm. College, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. So then, uh, you won the Goodwill Games on your last jump, and then yep. now, how, how long between that and then? The world championships in 91 um good world games is the next following year i mean uh world championships the following year so that was was my first opportunity to win my first world title yeah world world title right um you know according to the iwaf right proper um, and that yeah proper <laughs> um and um that was i got injured early in that season so really? yep I got injured early. Um, I had issues it? with my uh, calf. I I um, had a slight tear in my calf, which I've always had. Okay. After that, I, I had issues with that after that. Um, and I, I didn't know if I was going to be able to compete, but then I made wow. it. Yeah. Made it qualified. And then it ended up going there and, and, and um, ended up winning that yeah. um, world championship, which was an awesome feeling. Yeah. You know, I, I had signed a, my new contract with Mizuno in 1990. Okay. And and they believed in me before 1990, in 1989 and 87 wow. when we were coming out of college. And, yeah. you know, they were kind of grooming me and watching me because I spent a lot of time in Japan. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Competing because I couldn't get to European meets because there's so many 58-foot jumpers. <laughs> yeah. So Japan took me on and I was going to Japanese meets and jumping 58s. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. But they saw me, and so we ended up signing a contract. I ended up signing a contract with Mizuno, which was awesome. And um, I said, I'll be world champion soon. Don't worry. Dude. And, uh, just, just not put money. So that That's very next cool. year, I ended up winning the world championships at in Tokyo. Oh my god! In front of the in front of Mizuno. So it was it was like double dap, double win. It was just right. like a, a may. Yep, all the synergy came together. I was like, oh. It's over for the rest of you guys going forward. <laughs> it's Let's done. go. The deal. So that was sick. very cool. Um, what, what? That world champ. That no, world no. championship was pretty cool because it was um, my first jump. <clears throat> I fouled, which I never fouled my first jump. Okay. But it was so big. It was out past eighteen meters. Mm. It was huge. It was a monster. Yeah. And I was over rotating all kinds of stuff. So I was super jacked. Like, oh, I'm the record's going yeah. down. <laughs> today and i tried so extra hard to do it then it by doing that it just ruined it for me i couldn't right i couldn't instead of just relaxing and letting it come to me yeah i was trying to attack it which you can't do listen listen kids that is yeah. a huge point right there do not <laughs> try hard just let it happen 
you let it happen. Trust the training. Trust your technique. Trust yes. your technique. Trust mm-hmm. your training. And just yep. let it happen. And don't try to over try. Right. And that's exactly what I did at World Championships mm-hmm. then. And and then after that, I was just like, okay, I'm done. At least I have my World Championships. Now I'm done. I'm gonna, I can retire pretty much, I'm thinking. Yeah. But next year's World Champ or it's Olympic Games. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, everybody's like, well, you're world champion. It's like, well, I can retire now. I'm the best in the world. doesn't matter. Nobody can take that. Nobody can say nothing. I'm the second best jump jump in history. I'm done. Everybody can, I can go do marketing and public relations. I can go try out for the NFL, which I was thinking about doing after 88. Okay. Just go do, um, run, be as a wide receiver or even do a punt and kickoff returns. Yeah. Do that kind of thing. Yeah. Just as because I'm done doing everything in track and field that is possible that at the time mentally for me, right. that was necessary. Yeah. Then everybody came and chimed in. Hey, y'all, you have to win the gold medal in the Olympics. That's the ultimate. Da, da, da. I yeah. was like, dude, I just was the best in the world. How many best in the worlds are there? Right. Oh, well, you do gold medal in the Olympics. It's a different thing. It's a track meet, dude. The <laughs> runways are the same length. The yeah. pits are the same. All but, that. that yep. Maybe I tricked myself into that, but that's my mentality. Yeah. It's the same place. No matter if it's on the street, it's, it's I you love can call it, it what yeah. you want to call it. Right. This is how we do it. So 1992. Sure enough, I had the knee surgery. Yeah. Blew, blew my knee out doing the NBC um NBC um profile. You know, they do the profile, follow you around. Yeah. You know, what do you do in a daily life of Kenny Harrison before he's gonna, you know, because I'm favorite to win the gold medal in 92. Yeah, you know, winning winning meets by three feet and you know a meter against all the best of the best in the world and yeah. all the Hall of Famers. So I always pick the win. Yeah, um, early. So so I'm confident, and we're doing all the, the the footage, and they're having me do these drills and drills and drills, and then pop! I hear this <laughs> thing on my knee, and my knee is out, and it hurts like nobody's business. Swelling, everything. So I tear my cartilage and ACL a little tear in there and done oh my gosh and the the uh so I go in that we we get the MRIs and they should tell me that look it's you know it's not good um we got it's got to be fixed um <laughs> you can try how how bad do you think that interviewer felt <laughs> oh, or oh NBC. The, the NBC was done they were like ran out of there oh my gone. gosh they were gone i still have the footage from that i watch it all the time as motivation from from the the profile that they were putting together for the 92 olympics i have the profile footage of them videotaping and you know what i was saying and the drills i was doing and boom i remember the exact drill no way right before yeah is there is there any chance that i could get that and put it nobody can have that one yet (laughs) nobody can Uh, have that all right comfortable with that one we'll we'll our relationship our friendship i'll get you i think we'll i will get to that point to show that sure that clip that that um that highlight feel that that um yeah profile uh video mm-hmm. it is it's very it was very cool very cool bob costas was doing it it was all the voiceover and it's awesome. it's pretty amazing but um yeah that was it and um they were like well you're gonna have your surgery you, you we can do it now or you could try to take a chance take a chance and go try you, you okay. can't make it any worse. Yeah. You oh, want to try it. Yeah. You try it. You want to go to the trial. So I went to the trials and I tried yeah. it. Tried and then nothing was coming out of my leg at Dang. all. Yeah. Zero. I, so, I watched that meet and like you can just tell like when you do that one inch punch, like nothing. There's nothing gay came back. Blah, blah. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Plap, splat, splat. You know, I was yep. jumping 55s, 56s right. and it was splat, splat. And I was like, oh, yeah. Well, well, that's it. So yep. it, it didn't make me too sad because Michael Johnson didn't make it and Dan O'Brien didn't make it. Oh, okay. Year. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, they were that favorites. Would... They were big favorites. The big Dan and Dave thing they were doing campaign. Okay. And then uh, Michael didn't make it that year. So it was kind of like, okay, at least I'm not by myself. Right. You know, in misery. Yep. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I got some, some comrades with me. So it was kind of kind of yeah. supportive in that in that sense. But for sure. It was tough to take. That was tough. Um, So I kind of want to go back a little bit just because I'm super curious. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you won your your world championship, 
did you have it one going into the last round? Like, were you leading? I was, I was leading. I was leading throughout pretty much comfortable. Well, like the second bet, second place jump was like 58. Oh, wow. Uh, like, like, uh, I only won by like two inches. Okay. Two inches, but yeah. the, 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 they have this big metro, the, the big uh, screen on, up on, on, on TV. Uh -huh. And it, his best jump was a foul. Oh. And the whole crowd was like, oh, boo, 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 boo. But they gave it to him anyway. Oh, seriously? So they gave it to him anyway because it didn't show in the plasticine. But you okay. could see he was over the line. Gotcha, yeah. But, but then but he, but his, that was his, his best jump yeah. by like a foot. So I wasn't really worried about him duplicating that jump, you gotcha. know, because you know when people, I know what your second yep. place jump is. Just like yep. I say, if you're consistent, I'm worried about you, but if you yeah. got one big monster jump and you other jumps, so I'm not really concerned. So yeah. for me, I was super comfortable with the fact that, okay, I already had the monster foul and then I jumped 58 comfortably. Yeah. And then I knew that I didn't have to take all of my jumps. So wow. I wasn't really concerned. So yeah. I was winning, winning mentally, but then being a student of the event, yep. it was more comfortable for me to watch other people compete yeah and 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 finish then yeah and then as close as it seemed on paper like that most sure. people see yeah so when when you knew like when the last jumper went and you were like i'm it like it's it. what did that feel like is it's, it's just just like i said just like the good world games it was just like I, you're the best in the world there's no Man. nobody can take that away from you right. nobody i don't care what happens to you i'm yeah. just you just get to be like a little giggly kid a little bit you, yeah it takes you back to when you were skipping Man. you know around with your little brother your brothers at, at the beach or something you're just skipping yeah. just happy that, wow. that 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 euphoria is ridiculous huh. on how relieving it is yeah to be like be able to say i'm the best in the world at this wow. that i've been trying to do for this long yeah and and, and it's pretty it's pretty cool because it also combines not only i think people forget the fact that you're just not going out every day and you're training every day yeah you, you, you got you for me i mean you're own, you're your own agent you gotta you make your meets you gotta i gotta go sign my contracts with mizuno i yeah. have you know go and do um promotional promotional things for you know fly back and forth to japan to do yeah. you know, commercials and wow. you know invites and appearances and things yep. like that that you're that you, it's part of your life. So you you have your real person life, and then you have your track and field competing part, yeah. right? And they all are combined together. So it's it's the euphoria comes from the fact that you're successful not only just because you're a track and field athlete, mm. but because your business side and your business savvy yeah. is also just as successful mm. as your track and field part, and they come together. And it, and it's like, man, this is this. It doesn't get any better than this. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's where I think a lot of a lot gets lost in the shuffle when people say oh, you're an Olympic champion. I say, well, there's a lot more than Man. just the track and field aspect. There's That's the, good. The marketing, the manager, the agents, the, yeah. the education, all that stuff, the, right. all that other amazing stuff that comes into comes into play with that, and your yeah. your supporting cast that comes into that 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 makes it even you know, makes it even more 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 great Sweet. yeah for sure i i didn't even think about all that extra stuff too like i literally just thought yep. you train and then compete and when it happens you get it to happens. go play yeah, yeah right <laughs> wow that's cool so did you uh did you pick up any japanese when you were working on i picked up a little you know the simple stuff the domo arigato someone say <laughs> you know yeah in the morning and you know a little bit of um um i think I, we were asking for sizes one time and um, I was like, how do you say it's large, small and everything else, you know? <laughs> and, it, it, and they were trying to teach me all these different words and it, it, it was pretty cool. But at the same time, because you're so focused on trying to compete, yeah, they would always provide your, every everywhere I competed in, they would always provide me with a, uh, a uh, an interpreter. Okay, yeah. A yeah. translator, interpreter and everywhere yeah. you go. So I kind of got lazy. Sure. I wish I would have done more Japanese and, yeah. and, and, and picked up a lot more because I spent probably six, seven times a year in Japan for about five years. Okay. You know, just going back and forth, zip, yeah. zip, zip, you know, doing, doing events and doing things and competing. That's crazy. And it was pretty cool. So I kind of missed that, that missed out on that portion of it, but 
it's yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. Cool thing. What of of all the places that you've competed at, what was like your favorite like venue and atmosphere that you ever competed at? Man, that's that's tough to say because there's so sure. many so many amazing places, and yeah. I think people forget that we, you know, when we're in track and field, that's from from coming out of getting out of high school and going through college and all the way through pro and elite level. Yeah. Um, every year you're in Europe for with for indoors and outdoors. So oh, people wow. don't realize that I'm filling up a, a passport yeah. every year for like 20 years. So indoor, <laughs> outdoor, Man. filling it up. You're going to eight, six, seven, eight times to Europe or traveling around Europe for wow. this many years this many months or this many weeks right from every year so for me i will say what is the best and the coolest atmosphere i think was east berlin i like i like for some reason i like berlin okay. tracks i just like the i like getting there in germany and east you know germany and going to yeah. stuttgart and messing with the mercedes and the porsches okay and going to those locations getting in the cars and doing that stuff sweet but that that was pretty cool. I was there when the the, the Great Wall uh, they tore down the the wall in East Berlin. Oh wow! So that was pretty pretty cool to fly over a helicopter with a wall when they had first torn it down in ninety one. Wow. I think it was ninety ninety one. I I need yeah, to get back sure. to my history stuff. Right, 90, yeah. Ninety one ish when they tore the wall down. Okay. Between East and West Berlin. Yeah. And, and that was pretty amazing, but. Japan is a, a, amazing venues because it's so they're so plush. It's just like really, it's like your living room tracks, and um, you know, man, Greece is amazing. Um, <laughs> um, Monaco, Prince Albert, that that whole scenario with being on the you know in Monaco on the cliff's edge and the, the, the Indy car or the open wheel racing cars that they have, yeah, racing around the hotel entrance where you're staying, you know, what? doing that kind of stuff is pretty epic. No so way. There's so many things. There's India was an amazing, uh, major track meet for me. Okay. Going there and you know not realizing that you can't have any beef. <laughs> Because oh, like you can't even eat cows it while are you're sacred. over there. Cows are sacred. Oh, so they probably so, just don't have it. So what do you have? No, well, yeah, what are you eating? <laughs> so oh, so that kind of coolness and just yeah. the nuances of, of just different places and just being like, uh, literally being global yeah. person, being able to be in those different environments and right. be, being around the people and, you know, being immersed with not only being you know this track and field person where i'm going to compete with mm -hmm. meeting and greeting some of the dignitaries and doing different things it's pretty yeah pretty cool things. so between greece between uh i say um greece um competing there was probably pretty elaborate with being on the islands and all that kind of cool stuff out there and yeah on the in the, in um in greece and um in japan and then russia russia oh russia. Saint, what was saint that like st petersburg and, and moscow yeah. is pretty cool is does it feel like so the image that media per, you know paints of russia is like scary like you know everything's yeah. locked down they're all you know, you know oh no it's not you know, it, it, well when we get there it, it it didn't feel like that at all to me it, okay. it just felt cool you got good food yeah, i was old enough to try the good vodka <laughs> I was good. It was, it was, um, it, it was just an amazing experience to yeah. be able to go to Catherine the Great's uh, Winter Castle, see in uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Russia, and see the housing and just the people were super amazing. Sweet. Just a, just a different experience. You know, yeah. I guess we're going as like ambassadors for the United States pretty much. So okay. we get a chance to go through a little under and into some of the inner workings kind of with the down to earth people a little bit more sure and we, we don't have to do like the uh tourist kind of attraction kind of thing yeah it's pretty cool like going to see like the taj mahal and things like that it's pretty pretty amazing yeah but then just to be like in with the people at the same time is is pretty cool like in india that's awesome like I, that, so. yeah i think it's important like for for me to hear it but i'm sure for everybody to hear that like they're just like a normal place with normal people who are living their lives. But like, right. the, you know, the, oh. the politics just oh. and media just make everything seem like, oh, we hate these people. But it's like, right. they're just people yeah, right. too. Right. 
And that, I know mean, that's a perfect, perfect thing. It's like when we go, it's like people's like, well, we thought Americans were like, like this. Yeah. We thought, you know, we thought black people were shooting people. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. Oh so yeah, no, man. Yeah. We're not robbing and stealing people all the time. <laughs> so, just just some of the time. Just some of the times. And and they, you know, and they laugh and we have a good time with it. But yeah. they're just like us. They listen to the same music. Matter of fact, I went to when I went to Japan, yeah, they took me out to a disco to give you the VIP card to go there. Now you're a member for the year and blah blah blah. Yeah. And every time you come, you get to come here, you have your place and you go in there, they're playing the same music you're playing in the United States, but can dance better than everybody in the United Ooh, States. Really? Get it on. I mean, breaking it down, just working. Yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. And, and they're just as cool or cooler than anybody in the United States. Wow. Just having at it. And that's what I've noticed everywhere around the world. Everybody has their swag. Yeah, and their, their their style that is just cool and just yeah. what they I mean everybody does and it's cool yeah. to see that and I and when I come home to the United States I'm like you guys are square you guys <laughs> have no idea yeah you have no idea what's wow. out there for you you That's think really you're cool. doing you think you're cool <laughs> you're not <laughs> you're not oh man so so who would you say is the coolest of all the countries you've been to who who is really the coolest. Man, uh, I I will, Cuba, Cubans, Cubans, okay, Cubans. They got style. They got they they, they have got great soul, style. Yeah. They yeah. got swagger. They got they got they got they got amazing food. They got music. They got culture. They got they have art. They are just like the best unknown coolness they got is yeah. And they're beautiful people. Yeah. They have the they have cool cool swag and like I said, Japan. They are up on everything we we have. Anything we have, they're doing it, duplicating it, doing it, yeah. one up in it. <laughs> and um, and then, like I said, Greece is just they're just cool, just cool, cool, cool. Just like who you would like to just sit back and hang out and just have oh, a good man. meal and just kick back with. Yeah, the Italians too. I, man, there's there's so many. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, man. That's everybody cool. has their own swagger. Right. It's pretty cool. That's sweet. Okay. Cool. All right. We got off topic there a little bit, but oh, uh, that's all good, right? And that's that's all the good information. It's part that of the track. I, I want to know anyway. It's all about tra- it's all about track and right. field, which is the that way whole life experience. is. Yeah, that's whole super. Experience. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm just thinking back to like like Greece, like when track and field started. You know, like oh, there, that's what I say. I'm part Greek. <laughs> you know, I'm from Wisconsin, and yeah, I think I have probably six, seven some families that are greek are are greek from greece and um they're all my best friends and then when i went to the olympics and won the gold medal i was like this is greek created yeah founders of sport the founders of sport you know bottom line and then to be able to go there and be on the you know running around the 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 first original track of greece and wow and, and and being in that atmosphere and yeah, it's just it's just so humbling, man. It's just like, and then to be part of that that history now as it moves forward, you know, on the Olympic record and and to, yeah. to make that connection kind of thing is yeah. like, dude, I'm part Greece. That's too cool. Dude, I'm yeah. part yeah. Greek, man. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> Love it. Part of the family now. <laughs> hey, so that is too cool. All right, yeah. so let's go back. I think we left off. You had got injured, and you you tried to make it uh at the trials but the knee just wouldn't yep. wouldn't let you do it wouldn't give so then yep. after when the surgery was just like right after that then it's right after yep right okay. after the trials we went right into the surgery um doctors here are in san francisco for the 49ers or the orthopedic uh hooked me up told me i'd be back in a couple weeks like i was like i'm not an nfl player dude. i'm not yeah i don't get to just go play uh, play a game yeah this is triple jump. I got to leave the ground and land on this thing again. Yeah, yeah. Going, going 27, 28 miles an hour and, and keep going. And yep. he's like, oh, wait. He's like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me rethink that. Mm-hmm. So it took me a lot longer, a lot longer to get, you know, back to health a little bit, at least healthy enough to start training. Yeah. And then that even took a little bit longer. But um, I think that 93... 93 I still tried to go to world championships I was still not 100 percent yeah 
I don't like going to track meets 80 percent because it's, okay. it's just a pointless but I you know you have to do it under contracts and all that oh, other stuff interesting so that's a whole so world I don't know anything about that's a whole other part of that so yeah so with that trying to do that in 93 and then 94 was goodwill games again okay. and that's when I was back to like almost 100 percent okay and I ended up winning there again oh sweet and, in, in Russia yeah that was in Russia and that was very cool um, yeah. to have that gold medal again yep. um, defending champ and and then after 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 that was 1995 and that's when I said I'm taking the year off because I'm gonna get ready for 96 oh interesting because I need to be a hundred percent to get ready for 96 because this will be my last year I'm thinking I'll be 31 yeah I have I have no op options of getting injured i can't be right. come in like 80 percent yep 90 percent. i gotta be 100 and that's the year that jonathan edwards broke the world record oh the year in 1995 that hurt i bet that, that hurt just I, that hurt bad that just that that still stings yeah this day. because i i was like i i know every jumper in the history of the world i know their progressions i know everybody yeah, that's the student that I am, and I've never heard of him. I mean, I've heard of him, never. I've, I, he was jumping fifty-four feet, fifty-five. Yeah. Maybe it will sneak in a fifty-six, like maybe once. Like I said, yeah, you get that one jump, and then, then what's your second best jump is fifty-four, yeah, or fifty-five. So he's not on the radar of being the elite, yeah. The elite. So those progressions were never there for him, yeah. So him to go from being a, I say a 56 foot jumper with a 57 foot PR. Yeah. To jump in 60 feet. Yeah. That that was like part breaking. Like that's my, those are my marks. Yeah. Because you know, that's my progression. Boom, 58, 59 now, 58, 10. Yep. Now my next progression is my 60 foot and my 61 are next. Yeah. Boom, break that 58, 11 world record. Yeah. And when he broke those, I was just like, oh man oh it was horrible yeah it was horrible I, I, it was just go, go, go ahead. ahead no no you go but they, it was also the same same thing it was like look now okay now well, now what do you do now the yeah. Olympics coming up still now you got to go break that one Let's now go. you got to go now you got to go prove that point right when, I can't just jump up and be like I'm going to break it today yeah you know i'm not gonna be able to do that you you taking a year off remember you so, gotta take the year off yeah what what did that look like what is taking a year off look like you know because you don't just, just sit around no 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 not to take the year off of competing right take oh a year of competing because you're putting your body at risk at every to me you're putting right. your body at risk because of the the force, force the power trauma. and everything else yeah on all the 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 things that you're doing tearing your body down in competition yeah because of your adrenaline is taking you to different levels than it does in training. So every day yeah. in training, I can never, I could get close to getting my adrenaline level up to a point of like competition, like I'm competing, like yeah. psych myself up to the point like it's a competition, wow. but nowhere near that when you're in competition that you're right. gonna be putting your body at risk like you do with that yeah. adrenaline and speed and everything else. So gotcha. Okay. to be able to take off for that year and take that stress and strain off of your body, allow me to get my knees healthy make sure everything was locked in locked, locked and loaded yep and getting prepared for the for the 1996 here in america yeah the Olympic games are going to be in atlanta boom that was going to be the place to break the world record and and, and you just shut everybody up for yep. the olympic olympics in the united states everything i asked for like i said i want to break the olympic record on american soil yeah and i want to you know be the olympic champion Yep. 100 years ago when i was a little kid so that is too that cool. was my that was my ultimate goal yeah man well that's it so that's that year off so that <laughs> yeah. year off so that year off was just all working on small detail stuff you know yep. how 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 much speed am i gonna how, how much speed do i need on the runway to jump 61 <laughs> yeah how much uh you know i would i would take a stopwatch and take Jonathan Edwards jump of 50 or 60 foot six, I think it was. Yeah. 60 foot six he had with the wind dated. Yep. Um, 1843. Yep. Yeah, 1843. Take his 1843 jump 
I time is run time is approach. Point point eight to point to take off, time that. Clock it, write it down. Boom, got that. How much, Man. how long did it take for his hot phase? Clock yeah. it. 1.5 seconds, 1.7 seconds, 2.2 seconds. Yeah. Time that. Clock it. Put it down. Step phase, same thing. Jump phase, same thing. Then I should time the whole, the three, three phases all together. How long from point yeah. to point three? I just adding them up. Yep. Just getting an accurate account of yeah. how much flight time from from the board to landing. Yeah. Calculate that. Then I take my jumps. Calculate, time it, see how much time I, I am in the air compared to his. Boom, yeah. boom. How much time do I need to be in the air longer in order yeah. to cover 60 foot, 61 foot jump or 61? Mm. I had myself at 61 five or 62 feet. Okay. How much speed did I need to do that? How much faster, how much more speed did I need to amp mine up because I'm only running 75 yep. to match his speed on the runway? Yeah. I, I amp that up. For myself yeah and then working on how much how much patience do i have to have in the air during each phase to carry yeah. that and and i and i hit everything dead on in that preparation so all my drills that i went with the time how long did it did it take to break down his film yeah i would go now create my drills to to duplicate that hot phase how yeah. long do i need to be in the air do i need to be that high on this do i need to be this low do I need to make an adjustment? So I was making those adjustments in my training and my drills, yep. not just the jumps themselves, the drills, single leg hops, boom. Yeah. I could duplicate his distance Jeez. on single leg hops wow. in practice. Dang. And then I covered it. And that's the kind of stuff and kind of like, yeah, kind of like student you have to become. Yes. If you're going to take a different level. So when I was doing that in training, from my plyometrics to my weight rooms to my pool workouts to my beach workouts mm -hmm. to my hill workouts was all predicated on those those numbers that I already yeah. established from those jumps. Man, so that, but that that's just like, I mean, obviously I didn't know that about you, but like I would bet yeah. that you look at most of the like top top athletes, not just elite, like that next level, right. like you guys. Right. I bet that. 99% if not all are like students of the sport like you who like they care so much about it that like you're putting in the work you're not just letting your coach do all the stuff you know which you yep. don't have a coach but then like you show up right yeah like that just show up and listen yeah exactly yeah, I don't want to just show up and listen I, no. I'm, I'm that way with anything I just yeah. I want to come there with something to share with you like let's let's say if you even if you were like watching me and, yeah. and people would do do things and and, and critique like, well, I would try this because this is what I see. Yeah. Okay. And I and then I would be able to respond, well, why would you do that? This is right. why I'm doing it. And yes. this is what it feels like when I yep. execute it. Now, would you would you continue to say that or would you say, yeah, I try that, but try to do it with this, this, this added to it. Try to try to duplicate. And then it's a give and take, but then it's yep. also you're not gonna try to get me killed. Right. by doing this drill right <laughs> by just by, by just telling me yep you know yep. what i'm saying exactly but without you just trying to explain it to me so yeah that kind of stuff i think a lot of a lot of the elite athletes are are, are moving towards mm. a little bit i don't think they're as as ridiculous as i am <laughs> um all right well by breaking stuff down to the you know with the timing and the, the stopwatches yeah. yeah. video and the, you know the things like that yeah um, you know and breaking that stuff down on a daily yep. and hourly basis yeah but I, I i've seen that these guys are stepping their game up to a whole yeah. different level now really and i, I think so and How so i mean by what with their video analysis and gotcha. things like that um i think i would i wish they would do a little bit more more of that like on their own as yeah. opposed to listening to coach as much I yeah. wish they would incorporate what it feels like a little bit more yeah. and create drills that drills for themselves <clears throat> that coach is not coming up for, for them. Yep. I wish they would come up with their drills that are specifically yeah. geared towards what it's going to take for them to jump with their type of technique. Yes. I would love to see, you know, athletes. I would actually, I, I want to run a program where some of the kids actually give me their footage. Yeah. Give me their footage. 
and then them also give me their workouts of how to how to fix their technique on their video. So run their video, send me a clip of your video, your triple yep. jump or your bounding or whatever, and then tell me what drills can you do to fix whatever whatever's going wrong in your yeah. in your in your technique wow. and have them come up with drills on their own of what it feels like or what right. they would want to feel in order to help them to get better yeah. on their own and then then try to incorporate some other things that might be able to help them down the road but i think yeah. that'll be a good like startup thing to get them more involved like <laughs> you're the boss of your body and you know yes. what your body's gonna do yes so, yeah yeah because so. like that that's the missing piece like that a coach can't give you like it doesn't matter how good that coach is how experienced it. like they don't know what you're feeling like in your yep. movements and everything so like yep it's interesting like i think as you're talking about that it makes me feel like the the athlete definitely needs to take responsibility but if you have a coach there needs to be a back and forth and a give and take and not just a the coach tells you exactly yep. what to do and you do it like i agree you gotta yeah i agree and and tomorrow we're gonna do this. Tomorrow we're gonna do this. Yep. Well, wait, 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 wait. What about what happened today? What, what <laughs> I need yeah. to know. Why are we doing that tomorrow? Yeah. Because if if we didn't fix what happened today, how can we move on to tomorrow's one? That's interesting. Out? Right. I don't I, I don't agree with that. Until till we fix what needs to be fixed, I can't move to the next to the next level. Right. Wow. In my opinion. So yeah, no, I I, I agree totally. That's that's awesome. Okay. Um, so have we, we haven't talked the 96 Olympics yet, right? No, nope. no, nope. we just talked about the training to get yeah. to it. So, so you said when you heard about Jonathan Edwards breaking the world record, that that one hurt. Was that the 1829 or was that when he jumped 1843 before? Like, 1840, 1843. Okay, you heard about that one. But I knew that, yeah, I knew he was going to be able to. Uh, after, if you jump 1843 with a 0.2, 0.1, I was like, yeah. that record's gone, gone. Yeah. <laughs> right? The yeah. record's going to be gone in the next hour. Yeah. So, but, you know, just for the fact that he, yeah, he had just showed up and did that, it was just amazing. Um, and then, um, yeah, just being just heartbroken, just watching, you know, something that I've worked so hard and the progression I knew, knowing that right. that knee surgery just took me back. Yep. Took me back, my knee and back surgery took me back. And that, that was just, a, that was a tough, tough thing, a tough, tough pill to swallow. Okay. Did, yeah, I bet. Did you, mm -hmm. did you get any chances to compete against Edwards? throughout the season in 96 oh no i didn't i didn't compete against him i've competed against him at um you know in some other meets before i don't think he's ever beaten me okay. before then um like i said i don't i don't remember him sure but i know yeah. he had some had some meets that he was in but yeah. i think he was jumping like only 54 55 feet yeah at the time so but um no we didn't compete in 96 I, or 95 because I was because you were out yep. I was shut down yep and getting ready yeah getting, getting ready. ready he didn't compete yep. in 90 he didn't compete in or he did compete in um in 94 I think he competed in 94 they said okay um I was if, if anything he would have been at the Goodwill Games but he didn't show up to that either so gotcha. okay I didn't I didn't know about him before then so but I didn't know yeah. Didn't compete against them. That that's also an interesting difference between you know that era and now. Like, because with social media and everything, like you would have known yeah. everybody who's jumping everything at any time. Right, I thought I knew everybody, but I still knew everybody anyway. I mean, okay, I, the top ten. I don't care what country you were from. I knew your name. I knew your marks. Yeah. I knew what your what your if you foul a lot. I knew everything. Like wow. a, like baseball players. Know yeah. The, the stats of everybody i knew yep. everything about most everybody in long jump triple jump and yeah. high jump as well i knew all the that stuff okay. about it so H how did you find that stuff out like was it in the newspaper or like newspaper just do the newspapers newspapers track and field news okay. track and field news was the bible of track and field back okay. then and that was huge do traveling and and do our traveling you know european circuits and everything yeah. else you knew 
who was who, who was where, what was going on through yeah. word of mouth, you know, who jumped what at what in in you're in Finland, and then you'll see a guy over here in in the Greenland or somewhere else. And those marks will come in through through knee promoters and agents and blah 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 and who you got to compete against. So you knew exactly who was jumping what and yeah. you know at what time. So gotcha. You know who to be worried about. Yeah, yep. That's good. I, I still again feel like you're probably unique in that in in how much studying you did, like how much you knew your sport. Like that's impressive and, and definitely yeah, respect I love that. It. That's sweet. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. All right. So uh then let's talk the ninety six season just like in general, you know, like you're you're right. training through um with the Olympics, were they in July or August? I think who I want to say June, July, or was it June? I want to say August, June, Ju June, June. I'm not even sure. I should just look it up. <laughs> just Google it. We got yeah. Now we're not such technology field folks. I don't even know when it was. It was just a blur. All right, July nineteenth to the to August fourth. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah we were the first day. That's the Olympic Games or the track and field? Uh, that was the whole Olympic Games, I guess. Yeah, yeah I'm not so sure. Track and field starts when? When does track and field start? Let's see. Because I know that we were June, July, August. We are the we competed on the first day of track and field. Um, even if not that's all right yeah oh yeah july 26th so okay it's 20 a weekend to, okay. to the to august yep. 3rd yep there it is right all right yeah so uh prepping yourself for it how did the trials go i mean like obviously you made it but like did you feel I, good during them or or was it tough oh i felt i felt amazing i mean just the, i mean just the progression of just trusting we our thing we've been talking about is trust yeah just trusting that my training and and everything i've done years prior was on point and that i don't really didn't have to worry yeah so in 96 i i took one one track meet i did a three three step jump prior to the trials okay and um i i, I went 55 11 i think it <laughs> was so Gross. 55 11 and that was like like a qualifier kind of thing yeah um and um the, then i opened up at the olympic trials okay so that was my opener was the three-step jump uh about <laughs> four weeks out so i didn't get it hurt yeah and i could get a jump in and just my timing to check some things and yeah trial and error my first um jump was the the olympic trials wow. and that was um i think um the trials i Jump fifty six ten, and the prelims. I think we had the prelims fifty six ten. No, it was fifty seven. Oh, it was fifty seven. <laughs> fifty seven okay. something. At the yeah. Um, and then I the, the next day I went fifty nine one. Okay. So, so then I was, I just shut it down. No, on one jump, one jump. So all those jumps were one jump fifty five eleven, one jump fifty seven ten or eight. Yeah. And then one jump fifty nine one. It was the, the trials, and I didn't want to risk jumping anymore, trying to break any world records, trying to do none of that. Yeah, it's done deal. And then we went off to um, to the Olympic Games. Okay. Um, From there. So wait, so fifty nine one. Oh wait, no, no, that would have been the previous world record. Gotcha. Yeah. So is it? And it was, that? but it was eight. They said it was uh They said it was with uh, wind like, with the quind dated. Okay. It, so it was 1801 1801 or something okay it was 1801 and they said it was wind dated and i was like no it wasn't i know the difference between wind dated i yeah. know i'm an, i'm an expert there's no way that was yeah wind -dated. yeah if i can feel the wind hit me in the face i know that i'm it's running against the head into a wind there, right there's no way it's no wind is hitting me yeah so so i was mad about that interesting because I, of course i i wasn't able to break the american record at least Oh right, and and be the second man over eighteen meters. Yeah, so I was kind of, I was kind of mad about that. Right. So um, 
you know, most people thought it was a fluke. And, and that was that was the comedy comedy thing going into the Olympic Games. Really? Because they, ne- they didn't pay any attention because they, right. they didn't know my second best jump, 58-10. Yeah. It's like, well, that's only two inches further than my, you know, three inches further than my, my personal best so far. Yeah. So it's not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. So... So that that was kind of a cool thing of coming to the Olympics with people not knowing, yeah, not paying attention to that, yeah. and um, that was pretty that was pretty solid. So yeah, and then reaching the pinnacle, Olympics in your home country, like yes, that's were you yeah. just like so juiced up? Oh, it was so it was so ridiculous. It was so it was so like I couldn't wait. I, it was just like. I, I've never had a track meet that I couldn't wait to get to. I could always be like, I'm right. I can get to there. They're gonna get it anyway. But I couldn't wait to just go and and just let the let it loose. Yeah. Because I was 100 percent healthy. Yeah. I was, you know, I had good bounce. I was yep. I, I was co- consistent, and I knew that I've only taken this many jumps. I yeah. only took four jumps the whole year, and I went. <laughs> Like I said, 55, 5, 55, 11, 57, 10, 59, 1, 57, you know, getting ready for the Olympic trials again, I mean, uh, Olympic Games, the yeah. prelims. Oh, prelims. yeah. Prelims. So we opened up at uh, 50, uh, 57, 10, which was the Olympic record, 57, okay. 7 or something like that. Okay, Olympic yeah. record was 57, 10 yeah. before then. So that was no just a one jump pop. And I was like, like jogging down the runway to yeah. do that. So I was like, oh my God, there is so yeah, much like, trouble. This 61 go. is coming. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. I couldn't wait. Yeah. I, I couldn't be so excited, any more excited. Yeah. That's awesome. And and plus you had taken an entire year off. So like, I feel like you just had to be itching to like compete. Oh, just just to open up and, yeah. and, and just to watch, you know, everybody talk about Jonathan Edwards and... <clears throat> Watch a, watch people forget about you know your you you were world champion two years ago and you know world champion you were you know you had the second furthest jump in history right um, you know for a long time it wasn't from ninety one to ninety six you were like the number two jumper ever yeah and you were still competing and yep. they forgot about you yeah so so that that kind of like was a, a good motivating factor yeah and um, quick story with. Um, my coach Steve Miller, he was the uh, like the mediator at the press conference, and they had me, Mike Conley, and um, and um, I think it was uh, Gary Payton uh, on stage, and Mitch Rich- Mitch Richmond. Okay. Uh, I think us four, and Steve Miller was the moderator, and um, they were asking everybody questions. And Gail and Gail Devers, my girlfriend at the time, was oh, okay. on, on stage with us, so they were talking about that and what their experience and you know what they're looking to do. Mm-hmm. And nobody was asking me any questions. And Coach Miller goes, uh, so, and I was like getting ready to get up. And and a, one reporter asked, so Kenny, um, what 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 do you what do you think your chances are tomorrow or at the Olympic Games? And I said, well, my chances are, I guess. And my coach is he knows me so 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 bad because he's starting to smirk and he's like, oh, shaking his head like oh, they asked for it. I said, all I want to do is do my personal best. And they're, well, well, what's your personal best? And then when I told them, they're like, what? And then everybody started asking questions. <laughs> so everybody's like, wait a minute, wait, wait, you're the second furthest jumper in history. Yeah, behind the, yes, sir. And, and they're the like, way. holy, wait, oh, wow. Well, so you really have a, ch- so if you break your personal best, then you'll be jumping like close to the world record then. We're yeah. Jonathan X. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, then they then they went nuts. Then it was a cool like everybody wanted to ask more questions. So yeah, yeah. It just got people like on edge without talking about it by just saying, you know, I just want to do my personal best. Yeah. Woe is me. Woe is me. <laughs> and that's when it. That's when I was just. I knew I had everybody. With right. Me, from anybody. I knew I was ready to compete at that moment. Like that's cool. I would like bring this on. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So, so what was the morning of like then of that competition? Did you jump in the morning or the afternoon? It was, it was, uh, it was in a, it was in a, it was, it was later towards the afternoon, I think. Yeah. Because it started to get, it was getting dark yeah, well, okay. towards, towards the end of the day, but we had that bombing that morning. There was uh, a bombing? Centennial Park. Yeah. The terrorist thing, the bombing, that. one person, uh, 
died in the bombing. Seriously? Um, but there was like 23 other people injured. You ever heard of the Jewel movie? The which movie? It's called Jewel. G-E-W-E-L. No. Jewel. Look up Jewel. And it's uh, Jewel uh, Olympics. Just, and they tried to blame the security guard, Jewel, for the bombing. No and way. they picked the wrong person. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's a newer one. That's the newer movie, but it's about yeah. the Olympic morning. That's our morning. We were competing at 2 wow. a.m. We were competing that, that very day. Yeah. The following day, and we weren't sure if the Olympics were going to go on. That's crazy. So, you know, we're sitting there like, and me and, and like I said, Gail Devers was my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. We're like, yeah. are we going to compete? What's going on? Because she's competing at the exact same time as me when I'm yeah. jumping. She's running 100. Okay. So, we uh, we were like scared, like, well, now what? We got four more years, I'll be done. Right. The Olympics will be over. Yeah. So the focus level of like, look, no matter what happens, we're prepared. Yeah. No matter what happens. So yeah. long story short, we got through it. Uh, Bill Clinton called us from Air Force One uh, to on uh, um, uh, Air Force One. We got a chance to call them back on Air Force One with our agents. And he was like, Kenny, Gail, blah, 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 with his voice, his, his Southern voice. Yeah, yeah. You know, congratulations on doing this stuff. You know, everything, just, hopefully you guys did, are doing okay. He asked how, you know, what the atmosphere, all that jazz, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But we got a chance to talk to him after we won and all that jazz. And no way. Talk to Chelsea and Hillary and, yeah. you know, get to go to the White House after to, you know, hang out with the family and do a bunch of different, go yeah. there a few times. Um, to meet Muhammad Ali and Wilma Ru Rudolph, a bunch of cool things. No events way. that we would have there. Yeah, it was super cool kind of thing, man. Yeah. Super cool thing. But that morning, the, when we were getting ready to compete, that bomb went off. Yeah. And it, now you're up at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Wondering what the heck. Did you do. hear it? Or did someone like tell you and say, like, hey, no, it's worldwide been... news. Okay. It's popped on TV. And our pagers went off the alerts. Yeah, because yeah. They give every athlete because we didn't we stay in the village. Okay. I didn't stay in the village. It's too hectic. Right. Well, and it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. trying to win. Mm -hmm. So, so our pager goes off and it says, you know, bombing alert. You know, trying to see where everybody is. If you're, yeah. you're safe, or if you're in your room, if you're in the in the village. So then it comes on, you know, because it's like an attack on the the Olympics. So it was huge news. Yeah. So, so like, with that being said, we weren't yeah. sure what was going to happen. Oh man, that sucks. Like yeah, tough. Taking a year off and then training three jumps. You're feeling good. Hit a 59, and then, uh oh, uh oh. Is it here? We over? go again. Here we yeah. go again. Here's something's going to come up. But man. no, not this time. I'm ready. No matter yeah. what. Doesn't yeah. matter if we do it in the streets right now. Let's go. Yeah. Won't affect it. So. Yeah. That's that was awesome. pretty cool. Okay, sweet. So you, you woke up that morning, had the crazy news. Uh, do you remember what you ate? I did. I had um I had um rice cakes and okay. um tuna, like um tuna salad. Yeah. Super light, super stuff that's not heavy. Yeah. Um is that your typical give you like my, breakfast or did I give you change? my typical typical breakfast. Okay. Typical breakfast. Because I don't I'm not trying to eat anything. Yeah. Um, I do my hand test to see if my hands are shaking. If they're oh, really? shaking, like there's like vibrating, just like shaking. That yeah. means I'm super nervous. Okay. Like super nervous. That means I'm, my body's ready. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Uh, that check too. Then, yeah. Um, the night before, you you of course you take your short shower, so you don't do anything that the day of. But the day of, I take my little shower, but it's. Uh, cold water, no warm water ever. Okay. You don't put warm water on your body, folks, ever. Okay. Or any track meet, Interesting. ever. And uh, make sure that you shock your body with cold water at the end to close your pores. So it yeah. gives that your body that resiliency, that bounce, yep. that, that tightness, tightness back. Yep. And don't stay in the water more than you know a minute. Just get the soap up. Go in, soap up. Get out, soap up. Get back in, rinse off, get out. Done. All right. You don't need to be in there all day. Yeah. Period. Warming up, heating up, and 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 marinating, and and get, <laughs> losing all your energy that you developed over the years. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> so, that 
Okay, check one, yep. shower done, check two, foods in. Okay. Done. Now we just work on just patience, feet up, mm -hmm. feet up uh, on the bed, laying on the floor, letting the blood stay out of your feet, letting yep. it flow, that kind of thing. Yeah. Walking through, doing the small drills in the, in the room, um, whether it's um, walking lunges, light walking lunges, but making sure that you you have your pop, like little check marks for me. My check yeah. mark is I can like calf raises. Okay. I put my hands against the wall and I get on the balls of my feet. Yeah. And if I fire up, you remember that punch? Yep. Yep. And once I'm able to fire up off my toes and leave the ground oh. without using anything, not my knees, not my right. muscles, just my feet, how Sheesh. active they are, yeah. pop. And when my pop I pop off the ground and you can feel that difference pop and you can hear it, hear it and feel it. Yeah. I know check three is done. I okay. don't have to recheck it anymore. It's good. Yeah. I'm ready to go. And then I might take a couple of strides out in the hallway, up down the hallway because it's super quiet, soft carpet, yeah. nice and cool. Back in the room and just chill till it's time to get the ride to the car, to the wow. truck. So how how soon before the, the meet? Like when's the last time you eat before you went to compete? Like last time I eat, um, that is usually... I think it's like probably about three, three to four hours though. Three, three to four, four hours. hours. I won't okay. eat. I'll be, I'll be empty. I don't want okay. anything in there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be empty. And so you never like snacked or anything while you No, just water, 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 gate, water, Gatorade water, at the time. Okay. They had Gatorade, I think. Gotcha. You know, that kind of stuff. <clears throat> yep. Pasta the night before, I guess you would say. Sure. Yeah. Do the the spaghetti thing. noodles, uh, yeah. some veal something super high in protein. Okay. Night before. Gotcha. That's it. All right, sweet. So then you're you're making your way to the stadium. Is there any mm -hmm. like secret entrance that the athletes go in or is it like- Well, we go to our green room. Okay. The green room, they, they keep you like in the, the green room. You got, you do your warm up area. You got your warm up area underneath the stadium, of course. Okay, gotcha. Doing all our warm ups and everything underneath the stadium. Yeah. So once you walk out to the track, there's no more warm up area. Okay. You're out there. And, you know, unless you're doing stuff on the runway. Yeah. And they rarely let you on the track itself okay. anyway. So um, doing the warm-up stuff, but they have the little green room area where all you can see everybody. Mm -hmm. You can see Mike Conley. You can see Jonathan Edwards. You can see, mm. you know, you can yeah. see, you know, all, all the amazing. You can see um, my, my favorite kid from um, from Cuba. Yo, Elvis? Uh, uh, Yo, Quesada? Casada, Casada, that's my guy. Casada, <laughs> uh, um, I see him every time we go to Cuba. Okay. Uh, to work with the kids. Sweet. Um, and um, I see Casada over there. You see these guys, and it's like a, you know, you sizing each other up. You know, speed, drill, work, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm running by people with my loud sweatsuit on just to let them know how fast I really am. <laughs> 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 right when they right when they right when they bend over to pick something up and i'll run right off their shoulder Whoa. yeah yeah well, who is that and, oh that's a problem let's that go Spanish. yeah and let's go and it's just letting people know it's like a like a like showing your your peacock feathers <laughs> dropping around yeah you guys want to know how i got right now i'll give you a little taste of it right that's Ooh. what that room is for yeah kind of deal that's the first time i met jonathan was in the green room okay i said hi mr is that who are you and I say, oh, no, no, you didn't, you. did you? Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolute truth, absolute truth. I said, who are you? Who are you? Where'd you come from? That's what yeah. I said. Oh, you... yeah. And he just like, oh, yeah, okay. And it kind of caught him off guard a little bit, I think. Yeah, and yeah. I just kept moving, put my hood on, like I always do, put my yeah. hood on, and just kept got my focus on. Nice. That was it. That's sit back awesome. relax and like i said it's just it is the tension in the back room is so ridiculous yeah is it always like that in your experience? it's always like that that okay. experience is always at the bigger meets it's always yeah. like that even at the like european meets they're yeah kind of like that everybody's yeah, sizing serious. each other up, looking at who's ready yeah. what you're gonna who who's actually gonna be triple jumping this day if there's a new person bouncing yeah. around interesting around it's like oh boy yeah but you're not a student if you're just thinking about you you never know who's going to be coming at you. Right, right. 
Yeah, you so got you to know. Know the enemy. Yeah, that's right. You got to <laughs> know. You got to know. <laughs> oh, man. That's cool. Okay. So then the walkout, do they walk you guys all out or is it just by flight yep. they walk you out? Oh, um, by flight. By flight. So the other guys no. stay in there while the first round is yep. completed. Okay. I'm not sure. I think uh, at the Olympics, they might have taken us all out Everybody. first to get our steps. Okay. And then they went by flights after that. Gotcha. And do you remember what flight you were in? I was in, oh, uh, well, the, oh, the finals, the finals, there, the finals, there's the, the prelims or the, the, the prelims. Uh, no, no. Yeah. The final. Oh, so I guess, yeah, final. there's, there's yeah, not a we, flight yeah, there. There's yeah, no, yeah. yeah. There's no flights. We just all came out. Yep. So that was it. Do you but remember? The prelims is, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, I, I didn't see anybody at the prelims really okay. for the finals. Yeah. Um, do you remember what order you were in, in the like first three jumps of finals? Because um, do, I, I guess, sorry. I think I was behind, I was behind, um, I think I was behind um, all of the major players. Okay. I think I was behind everybody. I got to see everybody, which okay. is my position. I wasn't the last jumper, but I knew I was behind. Yeah those guys which is the the the, the ultimate position to be in. that's what i was gonna ask yeah do you prefer to be jumping at the end or in the beginning and put out a big jump if i'm i like jumping first okay if, 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 if at all possible yeah because i can just just smack people in the face right real quick discourage but if i yeah discourage there you go if i if i want to see everybody and I'm first jumper or in front of like somebody behind me so they can feed off of what I'm going to jump. Yeah. I will pass my first jump. Oh, okay. And I'll make them jump because they're like, who passes their first jump? Yeah. That's a big move me. right there. Yeah. I do. It's checkmate. <laughs> checkmate. And then they're like, wait, but I, but out of courtesy, you got to go down and tell them, yeah, I'm going to pass this first jump. I'm passing. So they be ready. So I don't just pass on you and you're like, They'll be like, okay, Harrison Paz, you're up. And you only got oh right, right, right. Seconds. So yep. Tom and Curtis a good sportsmanship. You better make sure you let them know. Yeah, yeah. And not give them any more juice. The, 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 yeah. like, did he just do that? Yes. Yeah. So I will pass first. And then that moves me to the be to the, the last jump. They don't right. get to see me to my to my first jump again. So I'm the last jumper in my mind. I get to yeah. see you jump anyway. That's and now cool. I get to come out and bow and yeah. kill it. So but in that scenario, I was the, I, I was at least behind Jonathan, Mike, yeah. and I think Quesada might have been behind me, but those were okay. the two people that I wanted to see that were yeah. first before me. That's awesome. So, and so then you come down the runway, cool. first jump, 1799. Yeah. And like, did it feel good or were you like, oh my gosh, there's more? That's it was just it was the easiest jump ever. And mm. it, the thing about it is that when I when I did when I got out of the pit, yeah, because I promised my friend, uh, he, my Gil's brother at the time, yeah, um, that I would do his. He's a he was a bodybuilder, and my favorite thing was he did the crab. Oh, his shoulders <laughs> back, crab. Yeah, and yeah. I said, once I get out of the pit, watch, I'm gonna crab for you. Do, <laughs> I'm gonna do that pose for you yeah. that you do. Yeah. And boom, I turned around and did the crab. <laughs> Uh, on the on the people and people thought that i thought it was a good jump and i was yeah. like no that was for my 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 brother my friend, brother-in-law yeah. to be <laughs> that's <laughs> and, hilarious and that was what that for but the jump itself was I, it didn't fit it was just easy right. i know how far it was yeah but it was easy yeah and i was excited and then when i saw the wind reading was a uh, negative 0.8 wind yeah and i was like oh, oh you guys yeah. are in so much trouble it is so over i was yeah. like it's so over it's over there's Let's nothing you can do there's nothing you guys can do to mess this up right right now so but then i kept getting the headwinds yep kept getting the headwinds and getting discouraged because i i gotta let me get a little tailwind let me so i can go at it so i would pass 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 it wasn't necessary for me to run against the wind and kill myself Right. So I would pass a couple of them until Edwards got a little closer. Then I would be like, okay, let me reamp this up a little bit. Right, right. Well, then I went 59.4 yep. and a quarter, and that felt like horrible. That was really? the worst jump. Well, horrible. You see how, how I got out of the pit? I was yeah, just you're, like, you're upset. What, 
what was that? Yeah. And then I saw the number. I was like, oh, okay. please somebody do something. Because right. I want to just show, I'm going to bust something that you guys have never seen in your whole lives. Yes. Now. So because honestly, it was, it was yeah, like when, when I was watching, you know, the, the replay mm -hmm. that they've got on YouTube of that, like, I feel like if Edwards would have jumped oh. 18 plus, I, oh. you just looked primed to like, well, I'm gonna jump whatever. It's whatever's is. gonna. They're gonna know what's coming. Yeah. I know. I knew what was gonna come. What was yeah. coming? You know. And I, I watched some of his interviews, and he says, "Well, you know, he just was. I was jumping just good that day." And I was like, "No, you. <laughs> I didn't even jump. I didn't have to jump that day. I didn't even get to jump at the Olympics right. because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Right. You were supposed to jump 18 meters, yeah, 50, 30. So then it would have been a competition. Yeah. You made it not a competition. Right. You made it that I was just jumping by myself. Yeah. And I had to motivate myself in order to yeah. jump hard. And, and that, that was tough. when people don't understand how tough that is mm. to motivate yourself to jump far. If you're gonna follow the first two jumps, yeah, which you did of the of the competition, yeah. I was upset because I was like, dude, you were supposed to be this is supposed to be the this is supposed to take me to my Take yeah. me to my millions right now. Right. And you did you let me down, so you better not fall out. If you yeah. fall out, then my Olympic a victory would be even more right. Like tarnished. Yeah. Because well, John Edwards fall out. He didn't get a chance to compete. Yeah. Because he didn't make the finals. Right. I would have been sick. That, but then yeah. when he made it. And then when he jumped far, I was like, oh, yep. now let's go. Right. And that's where my that's where my mindset was. But I think most people don't understand that mindset is like, look, that like I said, those jumps were far in Olympic history. Right. Like history. Yep. Okay. But that wasn't far to me because I was trying to get somebody to push me to my 61 yes. foot jump, my 60 foot jump. Yep. And the wind alone, the headwinds alone should let people know that those jumps were out there for you. If for sure, if just you even just to be at the wind the other way, yep. you would have had a 61 foot jump. Yeah. And if you would have had been pushed by somebody, then it would have been even worse. Right. So we don't have that. We don't have that information yet. Right. So that's what leaves that question mark over the top. How far could you possibly go? Right. Yeah. And I mean, I, I feel like anybody even you know you guys who are jumping the world records like there's still more for sure especially with the triple jump because it's so technical and there's you know four four oh, aspects of it yep. like if you get the run up wrong or the first you know the hop phase wrong step or the jump like one little thing yeah one tiny little thing right and just ruin it. yeah and the perfect it's crazy triple's never been executed so we still have nope. no idea what's, what's... We, we have no idea i'm waiting for like christian taylor to just i'm waiting for christian taylor to do something ridiculous and yes i want him to just I, once he runs off that that board <laughs> yeah and, and stubs double arming off of that thing <laughs> and slowing down and slowing down and just attacks the hop like i want him to do one kenny harrison hop phase or he's like, I'm just going to hop as far as I possibly can and yeah. see if I crash and burn or if I'm able to keep going yeah. and just see what's going to happen. Because I know he can jump 62 feet. I know oh. it. Yes. I know he can. Yeah. He's just Man. messing around. He's just and, messing and, around. And Will Clay as well. I'm just, these guys are so talented. Yes, and they're just, they are. To me, they're just getting away with it right now. They're not, push, they're not pushing that envelope yet. <laughs> and I want to see them just open up and then I'll be happy when, when I see one of them jump 61, 62, which I'm, th I'm, I'm sure they're capable of doing. Yeah. Then I'll, then I'll be happy. And then I'll wait for the next generation of people to come right. up and then say, well, we're going 65. I don't know what you guys were jumping back let's then, but go. let's yeah. go. <laughs> right? let's <do laughs> I love this. that. That's awesome. I am in no place to tell you Christian or will what to do, but, uh, <laughs> this, the, the man has spoken i'd love to see 61 62 yeah, i love those guys man they're, yeah. they're so talented it's just yeah. cool to watch them do their thing for it's, sure it's so cool and how easy they're doing it's like yeah right you're 50, you're 59 8 like that really yeah oh that's 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 rude <laughs> that's disrespectful <laughs> so yeah let's go yeah that's awesome i want to see them change their technique up a little bit do something just do just just tinker with it 
Yeah. And let's see him go with it. But yeah. So cool it, about it. Right. Yeah. So back to the meet. On uh, when Edwards fouled that last jump by, you know, a yep. toe or whatever, like like even, you know, as a spectator, not even knowing the insight that I have now from talking to you, I was just like, Oh, mm -hmm. I wish you would have hit that because oh. then like you would have yes. just been I wish you would have that's people think, Oh, you hope you were you hoping right. people were I like, wish I was hoping he got it fair. Yeah. I was hoping that I was like looking, but then once it was a foul, then the Yaiva with one more jump I was like, what's the point now? Right. That's done. That's the game is over. It's so, weird how your energy like kind of just disappears. Just, yeah. It just dissipated, just like, oh, it's over. I won. Right. Now I'm just running up here for no reason. Oh, yeah. it doesn't count. It's not the same. Yep. As if he would have just bombed one. Yeah. And then, oh, now it's just like roof through the roof. Yep. And that's a whole different thing. For sure, for sure. So, and I mean, different. yeah. I, obviously that didn't happen and you didn't get that chance to have that, you know, amp, but still Olympic champion, still got to feel like insanely good. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Man. On American it's, soil. It's so, it was the coolest, coolest thing. And you have to really come out of like the focus yeah. and, and, and enjoy the experience because yeah. I, I had to shake, shake myself a couple of times, you know, boom. Yeah. Where, you know, you're, winning the olympics oh yep. crap no kidding you're at the olympics <laughs> right oh yeah and then you shake yourself oh then you look in the stadium and there's you know eight hundred thousand eighty five thousand people they're focusing yes. on you then the global audience is wow. sick of how many people are watching you do this Sheesh. and and i'll say this that every time that you in in triple jump is my thing is if you can make the whole stadium go woo yeah. When you land, yeah. you know you've done something that people mm -hmm. are watching you that you don't even know are watching, or you made them watch you because right. they can feel you in the air doing something <laughs> like your your movement. The whole state of everybody can't be watching you at the same time. Right. But when you they see you moving, they're like something good's about to happen. Yeah. And then the whole stadium goes woo at the yeah. same time. That is the coolest feeling ever Man, to make a whole stadium say woo. And that kind of like, like wake up moment, kind of like, oh my God, pinch yourself and yeah. take this all in was kind of that thing for me. Cause you know, usually I won't take it in until I get home. Yeah. And that time I actually was like, oh, the Olympics. And that's yeah. when I went and picked up the sand. Oh okay, yeah. I, I, took, I brought my Ziploc bag on purpose. Right. Like once I win this, I'm taking the sand with me. Yes. I went down there, got my sand, yep. zipped it up, took it back and shoot the rest is, you know, pretty much history right there. That's awesome. You still have that sand, I assume? Absolutely. Sweet. Absolutely. Cool. I should have brought that out for you. Yeah. Do you, do you ever take it, it and just kind of run I keep it, it out? I, yeah. I, you, you open it up, you get to smell it. And you're oh. like, oh, it's the Olympic experience right there. That's too cool. So it was pretty cool. Man. So we had a uh, hourglass with 59 minutes and four seconds. Oh, no of way. It, of it put in there. So had to That's... grind it up a little finer, but we yeah. had to do that. But it was really cool. That's a really cool idea. Was that your idea or was that a friend? No, yeah. That's me. Dude, that was me. That's awesome. So that kind of stuff. So it was, it's a cool experience. I keep it with me all the time because, you know, when if things go, you get sad about some some days or if you're not feeling good and you're just like, wait, remember these days right here? Yeah. <laughs> you, you were like, oh, I didn't know if I could do it. Oh, well, look, now you, yeah. you don't have anything to worry about. You can do it. You can do anything. So. That's it's awesome. pretty cool. Cool, cool. Man, th thank you so much for like taking your time. Like I, I have a couple other oh. questions, obviously. But, oh, like, for sure. I seriously appreciate like yeah. I love oh. asking people questions yeah. and and you have a super interesting story. And like this is just oh, awesome. thanks, man. Thank so, you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We're good. So uh if if you I mean, I, I know you coach, you know, young athletes mm -hmm. right now and and current uh, elite athletes and everything but if if you had to give the people listening you know all five of them uh some advice right. on on how or like like what would be the one thing you would want a new triple jumper or a you know up and coming triple jumper to focus on one tip that would I, I, I would i would say i mean first of all know that you love the event or like the event 
Mm. If you like the event, if you like it, and, and somebody just didn't tell you to go do it because you're going to score points for them yeah. as a coach, if you like the event, my first thing would be like, understand that you want to be the best athlete you can be mm. um, without discouraging yourself by doing too much triple jumping. Like wanting yeah. to go do the triple jump without being the athlete first. So I would, I would encourage most athletes to work on your, your running technique, your, 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 your sprint technique, mm. your, 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 your lunging, your strength, those kind of things, yeah. your ab and your core strength, your, your, your sit-ups and strength, your push-up strength. I want yeah. you to look, you need to look, especially in a triple jump, you better look, look and be the part before you go play, you know, play the game of, of triple jumping. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yep. you, you, you can't be like halfway, like you, you, you weak core and all this stuff <clears> and then ex expect to get great results out of the triple jump. Yeah. But you can, if you want to be a great triple jumper, go be that, that, that six pack guy in the abs and a good calves and good strength and good arms and good, shoulders and you know, yep. got some physicality about yourself so you look the part yeah and then you're strong enough then go and then start becoming a better triple jumper mm. that way you won't be as discouraged by some of the stuff that you might not be able to do in yeah. the event because a lot of people get discouraged because they can't do it yet yeah and say yet because you're not strong enough because I'm going to ask you to do this. And you're like, well, I can't do it. I was like, I understand you can't do it. Yeah. But these drills that we're going to do before you do it are going to make you strong enough to be able to handle that. Yeah. So to, to, to let kids know this, you're going to have to be strong in all the foundational things first. Yeah. And then we can get after making you a really, really great triple jumper that you'll continue to get better down the road. Yeah. That's really good. That is perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yep. I think that'll be super yep. helpful for a lot of Cause people. Because I, I would look, like, I, you could take like a Michael Jordan and be like, okay, come and triple jump. And he'll break his knees. He'll blow a knee out. Right. Just trying to run down there and land on one leg. Yeah. He's already got knocky knees and stuff already. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, even though he's a fluid guy, but when he's got to land back on that same leg that second time, yep. that's going to buckle. That's going to give. So that's gonna go thing. Yep. so it's a different thing so it's not like he's not a good athlete you're just not prepared for right. what's going to happen to you in the triple jump yeah and that and that that's saying a lot as an act to be that type of athlete first right before you even attempt to, right <laughs> to come play on that on that on that runway for sure that that actually makes me think of a question uh if you could pick one professional athlete right now that you know of that doesn't do track and field and train them to do track and field, who would you want to, to refine into a elite triple, triple jumper? jumper? Well, I've known a couple of pro football players from back in the day, but um, let's see, um, who would I take in basketball? It would, it, definitely, it would definitely be, I, I know who I would take, Scotty Pippen. Oh, yes. Scotty Pippen? Or, or Scotty Pippen or uh, Dennis Rodman. Okay. Either one of those two guys. Um, uh, probably Dennis Rodman before Scotty Pippen. Dennis Rodman. What? Why do you he, pick them? Dennis Rodman runs like a deer. He's a he's a athlete on the court. He's just a guy that like a triple jumper. Yeah. He's an athlete that plays basketball. Okay. Nice. Right. And yeah. you can see that as he runs around the court and totally. his, his bounce, his stride, his arm swing, his, yeah. his efficiency of how he runs hmm. and how he does things, but his bounce, his balance, his agility. Yeah. His triple jump, when he gets up in the air to go get the ball, you see his knees come up when he's rebounding. And yeah. Proper when, it's, when he lands, he's under balance and under, under control. Yeah. You don't see that very often in 90% a, a of other NBA players. Yeah. They're just tall. They're right. tall. They're tall, but they're not as athletic. Not and an athlete. Got that power strength like a Dennis Rodman. I'll take right. Dennis Rodman over. And he's got the personality. A little yeah, bit yeah. Over a triple jumper. Yep, for sure. Yep. That's my guy right there. I'll take him. Yeah. 
And, I, and I'll take him over NFL guys too. I'll take him over any NFL guy too. Or anybody. That's awesome. I think at that's his a, height. Yeah. At his height and his power. Right. That's a quality he, pick. Quality pick. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, I would love to see uh, other uh, triple jumpers and, and even the viewers uh, who their picks would be on, on a player that they would think would be a good. Yeah. Uh, either triple jumper, long jumper, high jumper. Great idea. You know, I, so, and yeah. I think people forget. I I I, I straddle roll six eight in high school, um, as a high jumper. So, Sheesh. so with that, um, we uh, try to be the best athletes we can be before we go do the triple jump. So yeah. we do all the events, everything right. from basketball, football, baseball. Yeah. But then we combine that to just see how good you, how far you can do in this triple jump thing. And yeah, go yeah. from there. So that's awesome. All right. So yeah, post in the comments who you think would be a good athlete to uh, a non-track athlete to do the triple jump. Um, and then, uh, oh, that made me think of something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So with with training to be just a generic athlete and then do your sport or do your game. Uh, I assume then that you'd be a proponent of multi-sport athletes. Absolutely. And non-track specific training outside of the track season. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, that's 100% um, uh, on any level. I mean, on, on, on any level from the NFL level to Major League Baseball to little kids. I mean, yeah. I want to see you go play all the stuff. Go play. Yeah. Go play. And once you start focusing and, and becoming um, one dimensional, yeah, you know, you, you got this one move you do and you do it better than everybody else. That's great. You're, you're, you're an outside linebacker. But once it comes time for when I, when I run past you going four one, yeah, that, that move just makes you a good linebacker. You're mm. no longer an athlete. You can't come get me. You can't do anything about it. Yeah. So, but the, 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 the cream rises to the top yeah um those guys who actually do do that hmm. multi-event multi uh sport multi-dimensional yeah. training aspects to pre yep. prepare them for their game or whatever whatever love that they have yeah whether it's skateboard i don't care if it's bike riding whatever right yeah once you do something outside of what you're doing and then you go back to yours you see the elite yeah. people and you know and all you got to do is ask them what else do you do for your training Oh, I do. Da, 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 right. Da. I don't just go to practice. Hmm. I go do this, 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 and the other. Yeah. So, that's that's cool. really good. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, I think a lot of times it happens, especially at bigger schools, um, like high schools. I mean, uh, where oh, yeah. like you know they can't necessarily make the team of other sports, maybe, and mm -hmm. so it people tend to focus on one and just train that throughout the whole year. But it's like you gotta yeah. just take the time and, and get your body doing different movements and other things. Right. Yep. I, I, I completely agree. And, oh. um, I think, uh, kids that do do that, you know, I, I think people always say, well, well, he couldn't make the team. So he had to run track. No, yeah, dumb, dumb. I hate that. That's, yeah. that's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. <laughs> the only reason they're playing basketball because they don't want to do the track workouts. Right. If they if they wanted to take their game to the next level, they would run track or compete in track right. and field, no matter right. what the dynamic is. But right. they don't like working that hard because mm. in basketball practice, and I play at a super high level in basketball. Yeah. Nobody wanted to go to track practice, ever. Yeah. Because we, who wants to run 400s? Nobody. Who wants <laughs> right. to run, do that weight room stuff that you guys do? Who wants to do that bounding and stuff? Yeah. I'd rather just go practice my shot and practice the plays and do our line drills mm -hmm. than to go do a tr track and field workout any yeah. day of the week. Yeah. So that's why they don't want to do that. So don't be, <laughs> you people out there, don't, don't let them talk that mess about track and field. Yeah. Like, like it's the other way around. <laughs> Yeah, agreed, awesome. 100%, 100%. All right. I mean, yeah, I think that that's, that's a very good amount. Two and a half hours is a solid amount of information oh. for people to consume. I could easily talk to you for another few hours just because. Oh, yeah, we could go all day, man. Stories all for days. Of stuff. 
Oh yeah, yeah we could go. So we'll so, do another one down the road. Hey, I, we'll I'll take you one. up on that. So we'll do another one down the road and and get some more folks for you to to pop on your cast. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, like it's just all about getting information for the young young jumpers yeah. and, and everything, and, and for coaches too. You know, just to learn yeah. and improve to see the way where, they coach. Yeah, just to see where the athlete's mindset's coming from um, a little bit, and right. from from our point of view. Yes. And for me to be self coached, um, to be a coach and an athlete at the same time. Yes. Yeah. And then to have two different sides of you know how how you know, push me, pull me, how you, how do you deal with that? When you have an athlete like me, I'll be, who will look you in your face and be like, I'm not doing that. Right. BS. I'm not doing that coach. What you going to do? Right. Nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Are you going to deal with an athlete like me? Right. Are you going to work with me? Are you going to, I'll be doing basketball. Yeah. How does that work? (laughs) So, yeah. So those kinds of things that'll come up with athletes and and it happens all the time. So, yeah. And that, that's a tough, yeah, that's a tough one too. Cause like, you know, there's gotta be some, level of respect just in general like like you are the coach but on the other side there's got to be respect from the coach it's going to be coming from yeah this is i'm out here doing this if i come out here to do this coach right yeah i'm not going to be your guinea pig that's not going to (laughs) happen it's got to be give and take (laughs) right a little bit yeah that's for sure all right man yeah seriously i appreciate it uh hope you have a great rest of your sunday and um thank you you too Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you a million times. Thank Thank you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Let's keep in touch. Keep in touch. Hit me up. Absolutely. Will do. For sure. Take care. Talk to you guys later.